Welcome everyone to the Archon Team League Championships uh, week four. We're on day two today. We had a little bit of a delay during the week or a uh, rescheduling as a result of the event that happened yesterday. Uh, today casting with me will be Trump from Team Solo Mid and Thais. How are you doing guys, Trump? Doing great. I was part of the great event yesterday. A lot of fun. Um, back to the usual meta. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's got to feel a little weird, I guess. I mean, after uh, experimenting with, well, rather experiencing the decks that were built for you by Blizzard, and then going back to Grim Patron, and, uh, you know, the shenanigans that have been happening over the past few months, must feel a little weird. All right, I guess <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, so, Thay, did you see the the event yesterday? I mean, I guess you, you must have watched it, right? I, like, I was, everybody I was. did. Yeah, I was watching it the whole time, and, uh, yeah, really exciting. I mean, new cards... Probably something that will be really good for Hearthstone. Uh, will be nice to see some other decks, and I, I already want to play with them. It's a bit sad I still have to wait uh, more than a week now. Yeah, like, how do you, like, is there a class you're more, I guess, uh, excited to see their cards than any other class? Like, is there a class you really want to push and maybe see new tools that they're going to get? I think for, like, I love to play Druid, but I don't think new cards for Druid are going to really, really matter. There are so many just really strong Druid cards that you can't replace. So, uh, I really, uh, after the cards that I saw yesterday, I'm really excited about Shaman. And, uh, yeah, I hope that uh, maybe also Priest gets some love. I would like to have, like, a bit of a slower meta. So, if they get a better card, I will be also uh, pretty excited. Yeah, the, the emphasis on the hero powers, like, really changes the, the way people want to play. Like, if Inspire ends up being good, maybe that's going to slow down the metagame, because it's really hard to pull them off uh, in a very aggressive meta. So I can see that happening. Um, I, I don't know, Trump, you like uh, slower metagame, or...? Oh, or... absolutely. I <laughs> love slower metagames, and Inspire, uh, I think, is a mechanic which, if done properly, will... Not only make it a small, uh, a slower metagame, but will also make the skill ceiling a lot higher because deciding when to use the hero ability versus playing a card has always been a big deal, and now you're getting bonuses over time for doing so. So, it'll, uh, the longer a game goes, the more decisions you can make to get value out of your inspire. It's good stuff. Hopefully, yeah. it works out and it doesn't just get crushed by face hunter. Yeah, let's just hope we don't get the BRM treatment where we have like, you know, two viable cards for a total of 30 released. So maybe we'll see some newer decks coming up. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to look at the uh, the standings for this uh, the current league at the moment. It's kind of interesting. We had, you know, the first uh, first two matches of the week that happened on Tuesday. Uh, we had a loss for Force and Boys, so their second loss in a row. And you guys from Value Town, I mean, Trump, you got your third win during the entire event. So you're kind of on even footing with Nihilum right now. That's right, very exciting. Uh, once again, Kibler pulls it through for us. 8-0 uh, Kibler, what an amazing guy. Very excited. Yeah. Uh, we prepared a lot for Nilam. Uh, they actually prepared a lot for us, but glad to take the win over it. That was a really yeah. good series. I, I think this was probably one of the, the most interesting series because there was a chance for Value Town to equalize, whereas otherwise they might have just uh, stayed a little lower on the brackets. And I guess Nihilum would have had a perfect run if it hadn't been for, for you guys just uh, you know negating that uh, the perfect run. But it would have been pretty cool either way. I'm pretty happy to see that we're going to have like top two contenders. You guys are both casting with me today, so the games we'll be seeing between uh, Archon, Celestial Liquid, and Temple Storm. Should be kind of nice. I am curious to know whether or not we'll see any unusual decks this time around, since uh, people have been bringing Shaman a bit. I mean, we saw a Shaman bring like being brought by RDU yesterday. I mean, two days two days ago. I wonder if anybody else will do it this week. It's kind of a uh, on the weaker end. Uh, might be like Gara is pretty known to play at least not every time Shaman, but he is a player that can, that might bring Shaman. Uh, and also, Silent Storm loves to play Shaman, so I don't know what the decks they are playing, but. If there are shamans, I I probably think it will be in this match now. Yeah, Celestial has to get a really like they have to get a win at this point. They're already three losses down. They really have to get a win or against Temple Storm. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty Dex. important match because either uh, Celestial falls a bit down, and but for Temple Storm it's really important if they want to get in the middle of the standings, fight for the first places. If they get a win here, they are still they are two two and they are still yeah. pretty okay in the league. So, Trump, anything else to add? Kibler says you're wrong about uh, Shaman being weak. 
but let's see if they. Bring well, no, it. I mean, people assume like it's more <laughs> more people assume it's weak than it is weak. Kibler is obviously going to say that he's been doing amazingly well with it. That being said, guys, uh, before we move on to the next portion of the uh, championship, we'll be showing you a little bit of a video from Eloise, a player from Temple Storm. We'll be right back. My name is Hai, Hai Yuan Tang, that is my Chinese name. And when I play Hearthstone, I use the name uh, Eloise. And I'm now in Temple, Team Temple Storm. I, I play all kinds of decks, but you know, I, I'm more a streamer rather than a player, so I would rather uh, I play fun decks <laughs> at most of the time. <laughs> I played a similar team team tournament in China, but this the the Arcan League I think is more the the rules are more seems more reasonable. Uh, I mean seems more more fun, um, better. Well, I, I don't know how to explain, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> if you are new to Hearthstone, I suggest you run Hunter. Yeah, and you and you can become legendary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your love and supporting. Um, I will work hard. Um, That yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's one of the like the uh, really nice addition to Temple Storm Steam. I think it's uh, it's nice to see a refreshing perspective on the game. Like it, it's a lot more, it feels lighter, I guess, than some of the other uh, the other streamers you might watch very often. Now we're gonna see her play today. I mean, she's gonna be starting off uh, in Temple Storm versus Team Celestial. She's a part of the the roster. And now we look, we can look at all the classes. Uh, anything stands out there, Trump, uh, from those lineups from both teams? I'm taking a moment to cross-reference. Uh, I'm not sure. surprised that Eloise playing Warlock Mage. Um, yeah, I mean, both and, play, both teams are playing both of those classes and, with and Hunter I, and Warrior, so... Yeah. It's like and I four. think Hype was twice that he brought... Like, I think Hype al always brings the Rogue and the Warrior, and Gaira's always bringing Hunter, and he's just switching up that sixth class with either Druid, Shaman, or Paladin, it seems like. Right, today it looks like just four classes are being represented, uh, mainly it's Warrior, actually only three, Warrior, Hunter, Warlock, the main three of course, but I don't know. The mage as well. They're Gun sharing Rogue. mage as well. You, you have Tiddler and Eloise both sharing the mage class, so four classes are common about, uh, like among both teams, and then you have the Paladin uh, and Rogue kind of being opposite to the Druid and Shaman from Silent Storm. Now, you know, Druid and Shaman are kind of considered, um, I mean, at least in the past few weeks, we'd say that Rogue, Hunter, Warrior, Warlock, Mage have been kind of the five common classes, and the, the, the sixth one always ends up being one of uh, Priest, Paladin, Shaman, or Druid, but Silent Storm's playing two of those classes. Uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind yeah, of unusual. there's no Rogue from uh, Team Celestial, but well, this may be a bit surprising, because I think the uh, Frozen Eyes is a pretty known uh, rogue player. Yeah, like I have to say, maybe they're switching up the game here to take uh, their opponents by surprise. The first game we'll be looking at is Hype versus Tiddler with Rogue versus Warrior. Uh, do you think that's going to be an oil rogue from Hype? I mean, he's an innovator, but have you heard anything maybe about a new deck being brewed? Normally if, you know, normally, if you see it from Hyped, he's not really playing any kind of aggressive rogue normally. Sometimes he did it, like he played once a um, mech uh, kind of rogue, but I know I expect like a really old version rogue with no assassin's blade. Yep, what's going to be interesting is to see if Tiddler is going to switch it up into Control Warrior, which would be a really good matchup, or if he's going to stay with Patron. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Control Warrior would do really well in a case like this. But, you know, looking at this inner rage in the starting hand, I have to assume that's going to be another uh, another patron lineup. No surprise, really, though. Like, there's no upset as far as the lineups go for Tiddler. <laughs> Which means it should be a pretty even matchup. Uh, the Acolyte uh, is a pretty good draw. Did he keep executing? Yeah, he did. Looks like he did, at least. Yeah, and I play this matchup a lot of also on the ladder and from both sides. I was playing a lot of Rogue recently because I also bought a lot of Rogue in the team league. And what was what is so important is for both 
players to have their weapons, and especially for the warrior. If you are drawing into your death spite and also fire war axes, it just kills all the minions from rogue. And if rogue can't really make their minions on board, it's gonna be really hard for the rogue player to ha make a swing turn happen. Yeah, and I think yeah, l the later it goes on, the more the patrons able to abuse that board state as well. Um, as much as Rogue gets the burst they want, maybe sometimes they run into the problem of uh, letting the patron accumulate all the combo cards it's looking for. Tiddler has been someone who has really been a big advocate of adding a shield block into this deck. And in this matchup, it should be fairly good. Uh, it'll cycle for usefulness since the Rogue is looking to burst for a rather uh, exact amount of damage. So that shield block will help out a lot. Yeah, it's one of those cards that I, I, I remember initially uh, it was uh, kind of shunned by a lot of players who didn't feel like it was very relevant. But when you look at the metagame, it can come in handy against some of the bursts coming from Rogue, even Druid and uh, Hunter. It's one of those things I, I've realized about Shield Block. The cycle mechanic of it, uh, or the part of it that's cycling, is, isn't just a waste of a card. Yeah, really big tempo turn by Hype there. Yeah. Up, Use, and the using second the in a rage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit sad for Tiddler, as I said already earlier, like no weapon, and that's gonna really hurt you uh, when the rogue plays their minions. The rogue's getting deadly poison. So the thing is, two inner rages have been used up on the acolytes, which means there's not going to be any left for the patient plays if those come out. And there's a really big, com like there's a really big lead for hyped. I mean, he Tiddler picked up his fiery war axe after all said and done, but okay, there's the fire war. It's pretty important draw there from Tiddler to finally deal with the minions hyped is putting out. Hyped is picking away, but Tiddler is uh, getting stabilized a little bit. Uh, on using oh, the two wow. inner rages, I think that's okay, because you don't usually win this matchup with the patrons. Yeah, and uh, Hyped with a massive a sprint here, this yeah. is insane. The prep sap into prep sprint uh, on the, like, when his opponent didn't have the, er the answers for his early minions, I think that's going to give him a really comfortable position. Yeah, prep sprint is amazing in this matchup. Uh, I even... Uh... What was thinking of it, and I, it is. I think it is even fine if you keep it in your starting end because normally, before in turn four, there is nothing more than an Ecolide or a Nomish Infanter on the board, so it's even fine to do it already really early in the game. And you need you, you need to draw into a lot of cards to win this matchup, so pretty nice. Yeah, the thing to keep in mind though is prep is such a power move, and both have been used from hyped, so Tiddler isn't looking too bad himself. Uh, he's gotten to survive both of the preparations, especially so early on. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Prep can be used as a, you know, the Tinker's Sharp Sword Oil enabling factor, I think, is one of the strongest plays for burst purposes. So now Hyped is really just going to have to play for the board, like very tempo-oriented plays, but he won't be able to cheat his way uh, using the, I mean, the usual prep plays, right? Usually that's how you end up getting that massive turn. And Tiddler's got a little bit of a dilemma. He draws Emperor Thorsan, which is really yeah. good. You'd think to play it, but right now it's only hitting possibly one of the combo pieces since you usually want to yeah. do frothing. Uh, in some of the matchups, you'd really want to hit the Grim Patrons with it, but not in this one. Yeah, and yeah. also the Patient Assassin is a bit uh, of a weak minion. Go ahead, Thais. Yeah, it might be a bit risky to already go for the Emperor because Rogue can also remove it really easily, and you are a bit low on lives, but... I think he uh, really wants to, wants to fight for a board. Like a whirlwind with an emperor will be in really big here as a swing. There is there's no whirlwind here in Tiddler's hand. He's looking at this patient assassin yeah. as one of the <laughs> biggest threats. Oh wow! I can't uh, believe this. We're actually going to see a patient assassin kill something in a patron warrior match. Now that's something I didn't expect. That's well, at least times. the patron might get pretty decent value. Tiddler can consider going for the Wildswing Patron Armor Smith turn. He can even like get three or three card draws or two or three with the Battle Rage and get a lot of patrons on board. You saw a Blade Fury already gone, so it might be a play he should consider because there is now no way that he can OTK him now with a Frotting turn. Yeah, when Tiddler sees that Blade Flurry, he must think, wow, that was used pretty lightly. It's only for a Gnomish Inventor. So he might assume, and I think Hyped would play this way, if he uh, Hyped had both a weapon buff and another Blade Flurry in his hand. 
Yeah, like we're currently trying to get the rogue's hand to be visible at the moment. I think maybe hyped is uh, busy, and you know he's not getting the calls from the uh, the production team. So there might that might be why we don't see his hand. But you're right. I think I wouldn't be surprised if it contained a huge amount of burst, uh, being how he he used that blade flurry. Now he's playing around patrons by sacrificing his board. Wow, gets a really nice second shredder here. Yeah, you see, uh, hyped really lo loving the shredders lately. Uh, there's always the discussion between people. Do, what is better in Rogue? Is it the teacher? Is it the Shredder? And Riot is really what is really the player that says yes. Shredder is the is the and Shredder really makes this matchups better. Like teacher is not doing much with all the one ones against Petron. Yeah, like Trump. Have you seen any like there? I know a lot of people do debate. Uh, you know between heal bots and teachers sometimes. Like two of of either. I know Dog plays a version with two heal bots, one teacher, and he will swap it like in and out. But do you have any preference yourself for for the Amer like the all rogue? I think it really depends on what matchup you're expecting. It's mostly an alternation of Violet Teacher and Pilot Shredder as opposed to Violet Teacher and Healbot. Um, Healbot and Earthen Ring Farseer is usually the thing that alternates because uh, Healbot is better for a more aggressive meta and Earthen Ring Farseer is better for a control meta. So all of these things are very fine-tuned to what decks you're expecting to face. All right, so it's really more, it's about the opponent, I guess, at this point. And since you have so much data in a league format like this one, where you can probably use it, uh, you can make educated calls as to what you're going to put oh, in here your deck. here we go, Hype's Hand. There is, in fact, a Blade, uh, blade Flurry and a Deadly Poison, so he was holding the second one just in case of patrons, so he didn't just use the first Blade Flurry uh, too I, ridiculously. A bit sad is the double fan of knives. Like, it's the worst yeah. card in this matchup. <laughs> into an Ecolite, into a Ghoul, into an Armor Smith. The, it's it's pretty bad, but yeah. Just you watch that ghoul pop out another, like that shredder pop out another ghoul. Just you watch. <laughs> oh, it's so close, though, man. Mm -mm. Might work against uh, against warrior, but I don't think this no sugar is gonna survive really long on the board. Maybe long enough to freeze the enemy's warrior, unless he goes for the patient play or the execute. Which I guess at this point, in uh, like against a rogue deck, what else do you have to execute really? Like at this stage of the game, are you waiting for Doctor Boom? Like how prevalent uh, are those cards that you'd be playing around? Yeah, there are not really big targets you're gonna execute anyway, so it might be the best here. Yeah, you've got a second one as well, so I guess that's all right. No whirlwind though. No, but there is yeah, a better red, so he can draw for for two. Mm, I think this will be a draw three, even. Yeah, with the uh, yeah. death bite, probably just triggering the patron and the warsong commander. Man, that card is insane. Like battle rage, a lot of people say, well, it's not you know objectively better than arcane intellect. Like I've had some people try to argue that, but when you look at the outcome of it on average, I think it does better than arcane intellect in many cases. Sure, it's because this deck is built around Battle Rage, really. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things. I, there aren't that many cards that really work uh, nearly as well. Like, I don't think we have another card draw engine that's comparable. Although, Lock and Load's coming up. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. I look forward to the new uh, type of Hunter that that'll spawn. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's one of the cards, the archetypes that I've really been wanting to see the most. That is pretty fun. It's like, here, I'll give you all these patrons. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty fun that he's using the Fan of Knives first. <laughs> it doesn't matter, but it's just fun <laughs> that you say, yeah, here, get some more patrons. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I don't mind them it. anyways. Exactly. <laughs> that is going to be the second Blade Flurry from Hype, though, and Tiddler does have another Grim Patron in his hand, so this is actually going to be one of the matchups for uh, Patron where you can win with the patrons since. Rogue is out of area of effect. Uh, Hyped is really close though. He's got eight damage and only needs to get seven more. But that's so still a bit of oil. Away. Uh, possibly another oil. But if the armor smith, like I think there's a second one left in Tiddler's deck, unless I'm mistaken, and the, the first one died. I remember one of them dying. The second one I haven't seen. So there's a chance that Tiddler can just armor up way beyond Hype's range. And you know he might just kill his opponent a lot earlier than than that even. Uh, Matters. Like, Tiddler is really pressuring Lethal here. We're putting him, uh, putting hyped at 16 lives, and we see already the the war song with the flooding with the island. Like, there is a lot in the hand now. 
Yep. Yeah, so you, you just have one big turn. Sorry, go ahead. It is going to be lethal unless Hype can find some way to heal or get stuff out. Looks like he's not going to get it. And here we go. Oh man, the 4 damage backstab. And now the 4 damage to face with this uh, Berserker should seal it, won't it? It's going to be with the patron. It's going to be 4 patrons for 12 oh, plus, the plus the 4 from the death spot. Right, the second whirlwind effect. Yeah, so another win for Patron here against the Rogue. Again, would you say this match is like even? Going into it blind, you'd say this is a kind of a 50% win rate matchup for both? Or would you give the edge to Patron slightly? I think it depends strongly on how the Rogue is built. In this case with, let's see, it was the two Shredder, one Teacher, one Healbot version. Uh, I think that's pulling it a little bit more towards the warrior's favor. You can build the rogue to be a little more anti-warrior. Yeah, and double fan of knives is really hurting you in a matchup. It is just a right. death card that you can that that is even hurting you if you use it normally. So yeah, but it was pretty close. Like if Hype called, like if Tiddler didn't get that early weapon that he drew at turn four or five, there was like four or seven more damage or something. The use by high right. and that that will that will be put out uh, the rogue in a way more aggressive spot. Yeah, you're right. The the shredder and the earthling farseer, if they could have just uh, stayed up for one more turn, might have made the difference in the uh, in the match. But I mean, congratulations to Tiddler. So he's locking his his warrior out. So for uh, Team Celestial, that's already a decent start. Then again, I guess Patron Warrior is one of the decks that's most consistent at getting that win. So even though it's a nice win, it ultimately um, is not something that you don't expect. Like it's bound to happen. It's just nice that he got it without losing anything. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think? Tempo Storm is going to queue again uh, next up because Hyped might get benched if he goes out again with Warrior or the Rogue. So who would you yeah, send in this position, Dice? It's really hard to say. It's how Ope. Uh, it's so early in the in the series. It's you really hope you just get the better matchups, and it's really hard to get them. There are so many ways that people can go. It is pretty risky to go with Hyped again because of the bench rule, and I don't see a reason to really take that risk. Maybe when there are four other decks left. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's still very early. Go, and supposing that one of the teams um, on Celestial, one of the players on Celestial has a deck that's weak against Patron Warrior, then they can just queue it. What's the weakest deck that, uh, I mean, we know for a fact that Frozen Eyes has been playing quite a bit of Face Hunter. So if that gets queued into, you know, Hyped's Patron, I think that's going to be a big, a big weakness. Um, maybe Eloise is playing Freeze Mage. Again, that's another decent matchup for it. Uh, we'll see if Frozen Eyes decides to go for a slower lineup this week, because he's been proponent of aggressive decks, I think, so far in the, in this league. And it, it it has cost him quite a few series, I'd say, against some of the more consistent decks from uh, his opponents. Yeah, yeah, speaking I can of Mage, even though both teams brought Mage, uh, it's very likely that they're going to be different types of Mage. Tempest Storm known for uh, Freeze Mage and Celestial known for Tempo Mage. I hope we see some tempo mage. What were you going to say, Thais? Yeah, I think uh, for Celestial it makes sense actually to go with mage. I don't know what for a mage it is, but not going into the warrior, I think that's something you pr you definitely want with the mage. So I can see I'm going with the mage here, Celestial, but it, it's really hard to say this early in the, se in the game. Yeah. So uh, I've just received uh, amazing news. Apparently there's a new legendary that I want to talk about with you guys that was announced it's a 6-mana six 6-3 six that replaces your hero power with a better one. Uh, basically, making life tap costs no life. Gives your warrior 4 armor. Um, Druid gates 2 armor and 2 attack. You basically double everything. Oh, or you wait, get some extra... Happened? Yeah, that's six, an insane... Wow. Uh, warrior gets 4 armor. Basically, double up everything. Totemic slam instead of totemic call lets you summon the totem of your choice. Poison daggers. You can get a 2 2 weapon as a rogue. Uh, hero power for priest restores 4 health. Hunter deals 3 damage. The long awaited hunter buff for the hero power. Everybody wanted that, I guess. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. But We're it's really expensive to... for Hunter. I mean, going for a 6 mana, 6 3 drop. But yeah, wow, what a card. Yeah, summon 2 one, one recruits. You thought Inspire wasn't good enough. Well, we just gave you a reason to abuse the hero power. Maybe those cards will change the metagame bit, but we'll have to see. Um, but with the Warlock, it's still the same. Oh no, there is no life going off anymore. It's it's just draw a card. Yeah, it's like be, you got a yeah, it won't be too bad. It, yeah, it won't be too strong to draw two cards. Yeah. 
Wow. All right. She's so cool. <laughs> Wow. Trump is Trump is in awe of the card. What, d Trump, yeah, the value of this card. <laughs> what's the deck you play this in first thing? <laughs> you play it in every deck. <laughs> <laughs> so Doctor Boom style legendary, I guess. All right. Well, well I will get to see it in action man. as fast as I, I can't wait to see it because it really makes the late game a lot different, right? If Hunter can't race with your priest because he's healing for four, then suddenly you're looking at a much better position. Yeah, it's looking good. Can't well, wait. It looks really strong on the first position. The first look I get onto it, it, it looks really strong, actually. Yeah, innervate coin. <laughs> oh, I see it coming. Yeah, maybe there might be space for that in the Druid deck, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it should be kind of fun to experiment with. That being said, back to the, uh, the lineups here. So you said you thought Mage made a lot of sense for Team Celestial to go with? Yeah, I think it, it, if, if they expect not that uh, they won't take the risk of going with Hyped again, it makes a lot of sense, I think, for, for Team Celestial to go with the Mage. But I can also see them just switching up to either Frozen Eyes or Silence Storm. Yeah, because I, I think you're right, because Mage doesn't have a terrible matchup against any of the four other classes uh, that aren't you know played by Hyped. So there's a good reason to maybe bring out that mage. Frozen Ice is going to be playing as Hunter versus Eloise as Mage, so if we expect a freeze mage from Temple Storm as Trump, Hylet, uh, what are the key cards that really Eloise is looking for, Trump? Uh, Eloise is going to be looking for Fire Blast, so that's good news because she's <laughs> always going to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one reason why this matchup is so good, but um, other than that, you're looking for the armor stuff, so uh, Barrier, you're looking for Heal Bot, and you're just hoping to survive long enough, which often is doable as a Freeze Mage. Uh, it's a little bit of a surprise because you think that if you give Freeze Mage too much of time to stabilize and set up, that they're going to win. So you bring the Face Hunter, but in actuality, uh, Mage can just handle it. Yeah, I think uh, you're making a good point. I mean, the Mad Scientist getting out the uh, Ice Barriers and the addition of the Heal Bot as well. I mean, it, this is not a recent addition, but it's been played in a lot of variants or a lot of versions of Freeze Mage. And that's making the matchup even more consistent. Yeah, one thing to say about Celestials, I believe they have brought the aggro version of Hunter all three weeks. So we're going to see if they switch it up this week. Yeah, how does mid-range hunter fare against uh, freeze mage uh, thighs? Do you have like any experience with the matchup? It's one of the the matchups yeah. I don't really pin too much. It's a uh, it's a it's a tricky matchup. There is the the mid-range hunter normally also plays low tap, what makes it pretty hard because there is like high main or boom, and it's pretty hard to deal with. Sometimes it's really easy if you can get your early minions on the board, get a lot of cadre on, and. And turn 9 Alex is normally more than in time, but it's a really tricky matchup. And sometimes it feels really hard for the freeze mage and it just goes the hunter's way. I guess I guess in, it's one of those matchups where against the face hunter you're more comfortable because you're going to be wiping their board more consistently. But then when you start curving up or increasing the amount of health that the hunter minions have, then it becomes a little tougher for you because you have to get those blizzards into flames try, get a good you know doomsayer at some point. Uh, which can be a little more difficult, I guess, for the Freeze Mage. Alright, let's see if they are bringing... Oh! Team Celestial has mixed it up! They're bringing a mid-range Hunter. That is a lot better against Freeze Mage. Well, yeah, and Shredder's are good, right? Yeah, Shredder is one of the best minions in this, uh, in this matchup, oh, this normally. A Warlock! Okay! Oh! Wait! It's... You what? It's not okay. a Mage. So... We got Light to. Brilliant switch up. <laughs> Nobody expected it. All right, so Eloise is taking everyone by surprise here. Okay, uh, we're brings out the wrong class, so they're going to probably replay with the correct class. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, they queued sense. incorrectly. Makes uh, makes quite a bit of sense. So Eloise is going to go back to her mage in just a split second, and Frozen Ice. I mean, if you're expecting a mage, it's kind of unfortunate not to be able to keep that hand. Oh, what was, was really important moment. was that you saw that uh, Eloise uh, had Zoo there. You saw a Flame Imp and some water cards. So that I don't know if it is like really a mind game that she also has a uh, hand lock, but it might be also important to know for the series. So scouting, like having that information because of a, a miss Q is going to give Tiddler, like I mean Celestial Steam, a little bit of a of an edge there. Oh man, you know what? That could actually really play against them. Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know what for a mistake it was, so it's hard to say, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I, from Eloise, I really expect freeze mate. She bought it also the last two weeks, I think. She she likes the deck, so so I expect uh, a freeze mate. Right, and Zoo also was probably expected for Eloise to bring since uh, she's played that in previous weeks. Although she does also know how to play Hamlet quite well. Yeah, so, so apparently we're getting either. we're getting word that uh, in the rules, and uh, I wasn't aware of this personally, but. The miscue implies that whoever actually queued properly in this case is going to get the default win. So Frozen Ice is going to seal his Hunter class. So that's already a win for them. So they're going up 2-0 against Tempo Storm. These mistakes cost you quite a bit. It's, uh, it's a little unfortunate for yeah. Tempo Storm. Uh, but you know, if it's in the rules, then I guess you really have to make sure you don't but make it. Make, that it makes mistake. sense, this rule, actually. That uh, otherwise there is it, it. You have to have a rule maybe to prevent people just from scouting classes and from information things and ah uh, yeah. It's it's kind of sad maybe for uh, Tempo Storm, but th you have to make rules like this to probably have uh, to be consistent. Yeah, I could see that. I, I I didn't see it yet in the ATLC so far. I don't think I've seen that happen yet. Um, at the moment, so this was like the first miscue of the entire event, so the rules are being applied for the first time, creating a precedent. And I'm sure Temple Storm will remember that for the rest of their series. That's it's a something you do loss. once, and then you realize, okay, I'm really gonna focus now. I'm not hoping that will happen again. I think yeah. it. I think I also had it already once in a tournament. Like I think it will happen to everyone sometimes. But then when you have it once, you will always focus on picking the right decks. Yeah, so let's speak a little bit about, uh, you know, Frozen Ice has been kind of a, according, if you look at the pure stats from the past week so far, Frozen Ice has lost quite a few uh, a few games for his team, and Celestial is the only team, I think, not to have won a single match or a single series against uh, other teams. So if they end up winning today, you know, they've got this lead at the moment, 2-0 uh, against Temple Storm, that could give them that advantage. I mean, it's really hard to come back. Uh, from those early disadvantages, but it becomes increasingly easy for the team, the opposing team, to queue their good decks into into yours. So, I mean, do you think uh, Temple Storm's lineup can really get the six wins against this one from Celestial? I think it is still possible. If there is like a Warrior and Hunter out, then most of the people see this as two of the at least three strongest classes together with Warlock. So, I think it is still um, it can still go. Uh, it is too early in the series to really say that. It's going to be impo uh, impossible for Tempo Storm, but of course, in 2-0, it, it's a perfect start. Yeah, it's uh, it's not impossible to catch up, I guess. That's the strength of mm -hmm. Conquest and the best of 11. Trump, matchup, Hunter versus Druid, your bet. Um, it depends on with Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, but, philosophical uh, if answer. Face Hunter, if Face Hunter, then... Tempo Storm's at the disadvantage, Gar's at the disadvantage, and if mid-range Hunter, then Gar's at the advantage. So we'll see. Yeah, I guess Gara brings more a mid-range Hunter, or at least a hybrid, not a full face Hunter. Yeah, I like hybrid a lot. I think it's still uh, one of the cooler decks out there for Ooh. Hunters. But this is at least a an, uh, face or a uh, hybrid Hunter, I would say. With the Arcane Golem and the Glaive Suka, it's at least pretty aggressive. Yeah, this is not the best hand for a Hunter player, though, I don't think. Well, mm -hmm. the Animal Companion is one of the minions you really need against Root. It is powerful, and the Root can't really deal well with it, but this start is really slow. Like, you, you need at least a Metsidus or a Creepy here to start the board going on. Yep, sure does suck to hit the button. Uh, Gara must have considered Glaive Zuka as well, just to develop a two-weapon. How happy are you to do that, though? Like, because you're giving away uh, maybe potentially a bit of information. Like, is Glaive Zuka played in mid range often enough that it's fine to just throw it on the board at this point? Because what are you killing in a Druid deck, right? I, that's probably the reason why he didn't bother with it, is it I doesn't accomplish really much. Yeah. I feel, think you really want the buff where on the minions also with the Glaive Zuka. It might be really powerful. It makes. Yeah, what, what are you gonna do with a 2 H2 two attack weapon against Druid? Yeah, it just sucks to hero ability, and that does put the hunter behind, but fortunately Drew didn't start with wild growth, so it kind of evens out. I'm both yeah, had a pretty sad play. turn, too. <laughs> well, I think uh, the double swipe, though, in, in uh, Silence of Storm's hand is going to help him get out of sticky situations coming up. That's one of the few cards with double keeper, double swipe. I think his removal is set. 
if Gar ever gets a really good board until maybe high mains come up, if that's even in Gar's deck, those are going to be able to carry Soundstorm quite a bit. Gar develops the Knife Juggler Snake Trap combo. Uh, oh, man. This would usually be really good for a Soundstorm since he does have the swipe, but it's going to be really tricky right now to be able to defuse that without getting. But is he reading it? Something. You've got a full clear, though. I guess if you're playing around Freezing Trap, then maybe. But otherwise, you attack Misha. And That's, you can probably I, just swipe the juggler, right? It's kind of tricky. I can see a keeper here, actually, to play yeah, around that Freezing oh, Trap, maybe. But it's, it's kind of tricky. It's hard to say. Like, with the secrets going off, there are so many ways to approach. Yeah, the way that Gara played that secret, it could have been played as any secret. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, by default, you have to play around Freezing Trap. And Misdirection, of course. So, kind of a, a weird turn for Gara. Like, none of the options that I see him have really are shining. I mean, there's a good trade to be found, I guess, in the Keeper. But yeah, It's pretty interesting if Gara wants to say to Silent Storm here, yeah, I got that Freezing Trap out. And if he wants to make that move, he is probably going to trade into the Keeper. Yeah, and besides that, it's a choice to whether or not to stay on the curve or to play the Lepronym, um, since you have to play something alongside it. There's actually another choice, you can play Zuka, Lepronym, Hero Ability, if you want to go maximum damage. A lot of different possibilities. Oh wow. man, always help for that's a pretty heavy damage turn. That was 11 damage right there from Gara. He's putting on uh, he's putting on the heat here against Sandstorm. Doesn't have a taunt. I kind of like the move actually. With the uh, if you look at the hand with the golem with the lepernol also an unleash, you really have to go aggressive. You know that you are not gonna take the long game, and before the towns are coming up in one or two turns, it might be really important to get all the damage in. Yeah, you're right. Until you really. I think that's maybe the biggest weakness of Hunter and has been acknowledged forever is the fact that when their cards get depleted and they're in top deck mode, sure once in a while you'll pick up, you know, the lethal, um, but very often you end up falling behind like inexorably, you just lose at that point. Oh man, Silent Storm attacked into that expecting freezing trap and he's really <laughs> going to be disappointed to see that. Because if he had attacked with the shade, then he'd have uh, been able to do this. That's not a misplay though, because it often is going to be freezing trap. Yeah. But now if he attacks with the face, that's going to de delay his Ancient of Lore wow. for healing to later. And oh my goodness. But also taking another 4 damage. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be pretty dangerous for Soundstorm here. He's... I mean, you, you're never comfortable at 11 health against a hunter. I will never be. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. And Gara stacking the damage. Is that lethal? No, uh, almost. No, it's not lethal what? yet. But next turn it will be. And now he's uh, giving his opponent the ability to play that Ancient of Lore. <laughs> Arcane Golem might yeah, just save Sandstorm. Yeah, eight isn't going to be enough to dig out of it, is it? Let's see. There will be two uh, damage from a lep Lepronome no matter what. There is five damage with the Quick Shot Hero Power. Yeah, Innervate Still, hero still power the ability to play on the leash. Yeah, this is not going to be enough. It's going to be exact, uh, just because Gara drew the Innervate too for the plus one. I think yeah. uh, Hunter can do exactly eight. But can he do nine? With Innervate Hero Power from the from Soundstorm. Yeah, it's, I meant he uh, can do exactly nine. Rather. Yeah, okay. he has five from the hand, two from the Hero Power, and two from the Lepronome, so it's exactly lethal. Hey, wow! Well, that Huffer! That, that huffer, huffer sit on the board for much longer than you'd expect the Huffer to. Very often that card just dies as soon as it's done damage, but I think it dealt 8, possibly 12 during this game. That was just an, a really, really crazy animal companion. Gara really, I, I think picking up the Misha first and then having Sandstorm play into Freezing Trap was a really big deal. Yeah, It's a, it's a, a good move from uh, Gara. Gara is pretty known for just moving up their trap. He is like using freezing traps, explosive traps, and snake traps all the time. So it's really hard to say. Some people, you cannot really say, yeah, they're playing with these traps. But it, especially in this team, like, it's really good to just move a bit up with the traps. So it's really hard to play around it. Yeah. 
No, I agree. I think uh, it's ultimately Hunter has so many traps they can put in their mid range decks that it's really hard to pin them on exactly what you think they're going to have. Uh, there are some of them you discount, like Snipe and Misdirection, you never play around pretty much. But, you know, Freezing, Explosive sometimes even in those mid range decks, some variants of it will uh, sprinkle it in. So, yeah, there's a lot to play around with. Snakes. It had to be snakes. Yeah, Harrison Jones style. You know, why doesn't he say that when he comes into play? Instead of Drew to the Fang. I don't understand. I guess he's got a museum to take care of. So, the uh, the next matchup that could be coming up uh, for Temple Storm could be, you know, just sealing the Paladin from Gara. Would that be a bad choice going up against the entire lineup from Team Celestial? I don't know what Gara is playing for in Paladin. You see a lot of the aggressive Paladin that is also really popular now on the ladder. Um, but for a mid-range Paladin that Gara is a bit more known for playing, it has a pretty good matchup against uh, Druid. It's not bad again against any kind of Warlock version. It might be bad against Mage, especially if it is Freeze Mage, and Shaman is not that bad either. So I think it's pretty. Re it makes a lot of sense that uh, Temple Storm actually bought. Uh, Paladin against the lineup of Team Celestial. Well, How the did they know? Paladin is that there are actually quite a few matchups where Paladin is weak, uh, but the Patron Warrior is out of the way, and Team Celestial didn't bring a Rogue, and Team Celestial might not be playing Freeze Mage, so those are the main bad matchups for Paladin out of the way. Uh, all yeah. the remaining ones are fairly good. I don't I think don't... you need to send Kara up right now, because all the matchups are fine. Okay, so whenever he does come out with a Paladin, it could get a favorable trade. So is there something you'd want to win with like as soon as possible, being in Temple Storm's position? Uh, it depends a lot on what Celestial's Warlock and Mage are going to be. Um, Handlock, Freeze Mage, Tempo Mage, Zoo, even Malaga's Luck, they all have different matchups. You can look at previous history that Tiddler is probably playing Tempo Mage, and Frozen Ice is probably playing Zoo, but you can never be sure. Uh, in that case, I don't think Tempo Storm has many absolutely terrible matchups uh, because Zoo is one of those decks with not. Uh, Zoo's really good against Druid, but Tempo Storm didn't bring a Druid, and Tempo Mage is really good against Druid, but Tempo Storm didn't bring a Druid. So uh, all their classes are fun. They have a reasonable shot with all the classes. Yeah. All right, so I guess the Paladin's not as weak this week as it was uh, previously, perhaps. And, and I think for Team Celestials, really. It's really risky to go with Silent Storm again. If Silent Storm is going to lose, then there are two classes being benched. And I think when there are only four decks left, it's really risky to have two benched classes. Yeah, again, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with the benching rule, when a player loses twice in a row, he's unable to play until one of his teammates gets a win, which in this case, uh, if Silent Storm loses, Team Celestial is going to be down to Mage and Warlock until one of them wins. So there's a chance that Temple Storm can snag those wins by queuing perfectly into them and just taking the favorable matchup. So it, it's not really that big of a deal early, I guess, in the, the matches where you have six decks open for both players and they're all, you know, willing to play whatever it is. But when it's down to this, where two players have one deck left, I think that's a little easier to, to play around. All right, well, we'll see who's going to be playing. Eloise is going to be bringing out the mage against Sandstorm's Druid. Oh, man. That's okay, a freeze mage. Well, yeah, and then, then you see, like, the, the, maybe it's a bit of the double mind game going on where you are not expecting Silent Storm, so Eloise goes with the mage to dodge the Druid, and then you go into the Druid. It's, it's probably the hardest matchup now for Eloise with the mage to go into if you know that the warrior is already out. Yeah, not quite the matchup you're looking for as a mage player, mm -hmm. because again, you know, Druid is able to muster mm -hmm. a lot of bursts. It's not as bad as the matchup against Warrior, but it, it is a really hard matchup, especially against the mid-range Druid. Yep, Elise is going to have a tough one ahead of her. Yeah. By the way, Trump, uh, I don't think I've seen you play mage in the league so far. Like, Is there a reason you just don't play the class very much? Yeah, my my uh, teammates play it better, so no reason for me to play it. Uh, right, all right. Yeah, that, that team format. Silent Storm. That is the <laughs> sickest hand possible. <laughs> oh man, Silent Storm with the ramp. All we're missing is a Grove Tender and a Nourish. Turn three Emperor. There we go. Yeah, there is no way you mulligan anything out of this hand. Like really, no, re nothing. Yeah, but if he's got Kibler's luck, he's just gonna top deck Innervate and the other Wild Growth. 
Because that's what happened last time Kibler uh, played a Druid in the Vulcan League, if I recall. Kibler just had the sickest ramp, and then he top decked Savage Roar, Wild Growth, Innervate, and that never went anywhere. If Eloise knew what Silent Storm's hand was, uh, then keeping that Fireball would be really good since you could coin Fireball to answer Thorsen. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen because you wouldn't keep Fireball usually. Yeah, there's a, you can't really expect. Oh my god, is it? Echo Mage? Well, the Explosive Sheep kind of tells me that it is, but at the same time, Explosive Sheep is not necessarily. Uh, it might be just a tech card. There are, there are some versions that play just one explosive sheep to deal better with the paladins, to deal better with the hunters. And All right. It might be Echo Mage, but it's hard to say yet. I'm not surprised it's, it's that a bit weird if you up. play a Pyroblast and an Echo Mage. So. Yeah, and the Ice Bears as well. Very often you see duplicates and not so much. But she's on the same team as Hyped. So, so there's something to be said about Hyped innovating decks. It wouldn't be unheard of if something new's come up. I wouldn't be surprised to see it come out of Hyped. But it looks like a standard freeze mage up until this point. Right. Um, actually, it makes sense to do the explosive sheep now that I think about our personal preparations against Celestial. Uh, Celestial was br known for bringing a lot of aggressive decks like Zoo, like Face Hunter. So bringing a card like explosive sheep to help the matchup against Celestial in particular makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's where the team, I guess the scouting factor of previous weeks in a league format really comes in. Because you can look at those past matches, have a vague idea of what the player's preferences are, and then adapt your entire lineup. Where you're just stacking a card here and there that's going to help with that. So, good point. Oh, and pretty sad turn for Eloise by not killing off the Emperor. You always want to kill the Emperor off as fast as you can, but not really the option right now. Here's the really horrible thing. She doesn't have anything to kill it next turn either. Yeah, I mean, I guess <laughs> I guess this is going to be a really good Emperor for... It's already an amazing Emperor for Silent Storm. Getting the Savage Lord discount um, and the swipe for two mana could really help him get a bit more reach later on in the game. But there is not really a good follow-up. Like, there was... There is... Silent Storm really needs a lore or a Dr. Boom or something that you can, just can play on the board now. Yeah. I, there has to be a Nova Doomsayer here, right? Trump, like, do Absolutely. you think this is a turn where you're forced to do it? Because the sheep doesn't do anything besides kill the only, like, just the shape. Um, so you have to go all in on it. If Silent Storm whiffs here, uh, even though that start looks really good, it commits a lot of resources and his remaining hand is nothing. So at least has a good chance of it if Silent Storm whiffs here. Keeper top deck? Nope. Not the esports we were looking for. You can still kill it with uh, Swipe Savage Raw, but is it worth it to spend two cards? Oh my spread? goodness, alright. So I guess you're dealing one damage to the enemy's face with that, uh, that Swipe. That is such a huge resource commitment, but he's not going to run into a Blizzard turn just yet. So I guess it's alright. Yeah, that's just up for to Swallow for the Druid, but it is really good because you save a 5-3 on a 4-4, four, four, which grows. Oh man, well that's good. That first of all is a pretty good pickup, I would say. Yeah, I mean you can even follow it up with the, one of your two eyes barriers. So again, that's going to put you further away from the combo range. You've seen one Savage Roar, so you've got to feel somewhat okay with it. I think Silent Storm picking up an Ancient of Lore uh, would change the way this game is going to go from now on. Absolutely. Without it, he'll run out of fuel. Um, the Silent Storm has to make a decision right now on whether or not he wants to play all of his cards or if he wants to save BGH. Uh, no real reason to save BGH unless you're playing around Blizzard, uh, which is a big deal because he's just playing the Shade right now. So, yeah, and it, yeah. that's a, it's turn 6 in coming, so I don't really want... It's a bit tricky to play the Big Game Hunter now. Yeah, I agree with the with that, Thais. I think, I think ultimately for tempo purposes you'd want to do it, but when you look at the possibilities that uh, Luis might have that since she didn't have an answer to your early Thorson, which means she might not have spot removal but a lot of AoE instead, maybe that indicates that you're going to be more vulnerable by uh, extending here. And that's a fine call because uh, if he had played it, Luis would have punished with Explosive Sheep Fire Blast. And the Explosive Sheep would have been... Amazing. Still tough spot for Heloise because uh, even though Sunstorm, we know that he's out of juice completely. Uh, that's still a big enough threat on the board to be scared of. 
Do you have to Nova standalone here? Just like a straight up Nova with Ice Barrier again? So you get yourself a bit more time to find a Flame Strike, possibly. Although it, it's starting to be late for the Flame Strike with that shade on the board. It's gonna go out of, uh, of range of Flame Strike, in fact. Ooh, yeah, she makes I, the Brave play. I was thinking I actually there like it. Some players here. And it's that one good. was just the ambitious one. Well, out yeah. of juice, but not for long. That's uh, that's a nice pickup for Sandstorm. If he gets, again, more card draw, that's going to enable him to go a little further in this game. But again, the more he extends on this board, the more weakened he is. Like, how do you feel about just punishing... Like, you have to trade away your shade, but if you do so, then you're suddenly even more vulnerable to Flame Strike than you were a second ago. So what would you have thought about playing the Shredder plus, you know, uh, using your face as a trading... instead of uh, losing the shade? I actually like that you always have the main. It's pretty likely there is coming up AOE. If there are three or four minions, the AOE will be played if there is AOE. So it makes a lot of sense to just trade with your shade to have always that shredder backup, no matter what comes out of it. Trade with your shade. Trump, you got some, uh, some stuff for your rap battles. <laughs> trade <laughs> trade with the shade. Point, though, uh, because you do have your five health shade, which gets out of flame strike range. So I think both players are quite reasonable there. Yeah. Oh wow, that's the silence and the explosive sheep. Wow, <laughs> how many times do you see that keepering a silence the explosive sheep? I think Turns that was a good really argument. Good to be... Go ahead. Saves Sorry, all of his minions. Yeah, but I, I thought the uh, Eloise would keep that sheep maybe to... <laughs> oh, 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 this would have been insane. <laughs> I thought she, she would have kept that sheep to ping it on her next turn, you know, because she didn't have to commit to it in risk that it would get removed by the druid with a silence effect. It's kind of like playing Doomsayer, except in this case, you might be able to trigger your own Doomsayer for sure, whereas now it's kind of gone. The, well, this Mad Scientist she, is, by the way, the worst draw ever, because there are already two I, or the barriers in the hand, the other one is already out of the deck, so that Mad Scientist is not going to do anything now. Yeah, the, good the point. The thing about the sheep is it speaks about like the observation power of everyone here, because on, on, in a vacuum, that play looks bad, but Silent Storm was only at one card left and was just continuing to play the card he top deck. So uh, you look back to the previous turn where you did a Frost Nova Doomsayer. And right, and she didn't, he didn't do it. You, didn't you know what? Through. Crazy good point, Trump. You're right. Makes so, more sense. She made the play which let her get away with an extra two mana and would have worked most of the time. But unfortunately, she ran to the play where it didn't. Uh, it's like risk reward. Uh, you can also argue that the risk wasn't even worth it because she didn't really have anything to do on a turn where saving the two mana would have helped. So that's a tough call. But now she's looking for flame strike. Yeah, and she, like, even Blizzard would kind of cut it because you've got the ghoul that you can ping and kind of create a pseudo flame strike AoE. But flame strike would obviously be the best. Um, Thing is, a lot of mages only run the one now. You know, rightfully so. I don't think there's always uh, room for two flame strikes. But it's become a trend where people have been starting to cut those things with the advent of Emperor Thorson as well. You know, that, that does cut. You have to cut somewhere, and cutting to the AoE to increase your chances to get a lethal leader is something that a lot of people have been doing. Wow. This. It's pretty sad. Did Eloise get like any card draw? One Arcan Intellect, I think, but no, um, no loot holders or Acolyte of Pains. It's uh, mm. it's going pretty rough here. I the the thing is, I get the feeling that this is the same game I watched Forsen play in that mirror match Freeze Mage, where you just no, don't. No, that one was worse. <laughs> that one was worse. <laughs> Double play. I saw the screenshot from that one. That was amazing. Interesting. And yeah. it can only happen to Forsen. That's the feeling I get when I see that hand and <laughs> when Forsen is playing. Yeah, when you're lever nucky, I guess that's what happens. Normally, it's not even a bad hand, but it's just terrible in the mirror, having all these freeze effects. So, will we see a Pyroblast minion play? Like, is there a possibility that, he, that Eloise just Pyroblast the ghoul to, get, to kill the drake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no way. This would be the dream. Okay, guess it goes in the charge. 
Oh, is the bug fixed? Um, I think it's fixed half the time. Oh, so, so you're flipping so your coin. not fixed at all, are <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I just It seemed to happen a lot more frequently than it has recently. Although Blizzard did have a lot of problems yesterday when they were uh, doing the event at the, the foundry. They seem to be running a little bit of problems, technically. Oh, man. There we go. You just have to go for it, I think. With the Pyro Blessing and the second Ice Bug, you don't really have any more options than just pray for the best and see how far you can get. It might work actually with the like an Arcane or like top deck into say Frostbolt Ice Lance and then you play the second Ice Block. Would you have enough damage ever to kill? No, it's still not gonna be enough. There has to be an Arcane Intellect with a freeze effect and hope that there is no that there is no damage output just from the hand, but we already see also with the second lord, and it's gonna be hard. Yeah, so I'm gonna do the usual thing of setting the opponent down to one. Makes it really hard for Eloise to make a comeback, even if she were at higher. And still a swipe in the hand if there will any be kind of freezing. Yeah, it is important to realize the uh, intricacy of Savage Roar versus Swipe there, because Savage Roar can possibly or Swipe can't be countered, but Savage Roar could possibly be countered with a Frostbolt to the face and a Blizzard or something. Well, I think there's only... I mean, you're kind of forced to play Blood Mage, ping it, and hope for... I mean, there's no more Frost Nova, so you can't just Frost Nova... And there's nothing you can draw. Yeah, but there's really nothing here, right? Like, there's absolutely... It's like, you, you just stall for one turn, but you already know... I think you know already yourself that it's not gonna matter. Yeah, it feels bad when you're freeze mage and you have those two ice blocks and it's like, oh, I'm just gonna die eventually. Oh wow, that's actually a really good card against freeze mage anyway. Yeah. Yeah, not oh. just a good card against freeze mage, but also against handlock and rogue. Uh, Team Celestial might have done their homework this week. It sure looks like it, at least. I mean, they seem to be fully prepared. Although, you know, arguably we didn't really get to see the second game uh, what with uh, Magic, uh, Magic Amy. Wow, Eloise. <laughs> Eloise uh, miscuing into Team Celestial, which caused uh, an automatic loss for them. So. Yeah, this is... Uh, I think this game, like, you can still, you can still try to stall the, ter the game here by ice lensing the face also, but... We know it's already over with Rack and swipe, swipe in the hands. Yeah. Well, at least we'll get to see another Freeze Mage game. Again, this is a really unfortunate matchup for Eloise, which is queuing up with Freeze Mage into... A, you know, as we said, if Sunstorm lost this, he was going to get benched. So I think, as you said, this is all mind games where they knew they were probably going to be facing off against someone else than Silent Storm because of the benching rule, but then Team Celestial countermined game by queuing up Silent Storm with his Druid deck against Eloise's Freeze Mage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that is, it is really, there is like, it's going on in all the teams and you try to play with the bench, bench rule, play around the bench rule, but it's re really hard to approach how you are thinking and how the other team is thinking about it. Yeah, like Trump. Like, how do you guys approach the bench rule as a player? Uh, how much does it weigh in your decision to queue, to like to, to manipulate the queue? Is there a huge incentive? Because some people say it's not really that relevant. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure some of the people you've talked to have said like they just flip coins for the matchup, and the bench rule doesn't even matter. And then some people are going to be like, oh, we can't possibly risk the bench. In reality, it's somewhere in between, and. It's really it hard depends. to say. Right. It exactly. depends, yeah. right? <laughs> it's it's yeah. just not. Imp it's just important, I think, that you don't do it all, everything the same time. That you don't. Uh, you should not try to avoid it every time. You should not go into it all the time. It's just that you show a bit of different uh, thoughts on it. All exactly. right. So you're not too predictable, even yeah. regarding the bench rule. All right, makes sense. See that that's. Uh, that's less dependable, although it still is. So, going into the, the matchups here, we've got one deck left for each of Team Celestial's players. They're up 3-1 against Tempo Storm. Uh, they're, not, they're starting to get to the point where their decks can be targeted. Is there one of their decks that would have an amazing matchup against everything from Tempo Storm at all? 
I think Paladin well, is, if it's mid range, it is really good against all of Tempo Mage and Zoo and Shaman. That's uh, so actually hard their to best say. deck right now. It's so hard to say if we don't know what the mage and the warlock is because they always sw they also switched up the hunter. Uh, it's and they didn't play with Druid last time, so it's really hard to say w what the mage and the warlock is. But if we assume that, I would say also that it might be the best to go with Paladin. Yeah. Also, um, if it is Tempo Mage and Zoo, then Patron Warrior is also very good against uh, all three of those decks. But when you're up against Celestial, like they say, it's hardest to face an opponent who's backed against the corner like Celestial was. They can pull off anything. When you are a 0-3, you have like nothing to lose, almost, and you just need to try something radical in order to get back in the right direction. So... Um, they brought mid-range Hunter instead of Hunter. Are they going to bring two other different decks? We'll see. Yeah. So, guys uh, who are watching this, if you want your message to show up on, on the stream, there's a Twitter feed at the bottom. So if you have commentaries about uh, about the game, comments about the game, rather, uh, feel free to post them. You know, hashtag ATLC. They'll show up at the bottom, whether they're nice words, mean words, or just comments about the, <laughs> about the games that have been played. Enjoy it. So, I think Soundstorm Shaman could be a little bit of an upset here. Uh, you know, it's one of the classes. I know Kibler's been playing it pretty much, you know, what, 100% of the time? I think there's one week yeah. he didn't bring it, like week two, and he, he ended up, um, he still went undefeated. But it's been very good for him. I wonder if it's going to be as good for Soundstorm. It, it's also doing pretty well for Radu. He is, I think he is like, he bought it two times in, in the four matches, and it went not like, 2-0, but I think 2-1 or 2-2. So it was, it's not that the Max Shaman is bad at all, but you need to do it at the right times into the right matchups, I feel like. Yeah, in this case, if it is mech, uh, which it probably is, it's strong against, uh, I think, three of Tempo Storm's decks and weak against two of them. Uh, Sounds yeah. going to want to dodge the Paladin and the Zoo matchup. Yeah, Silent Storm is a bit known for playing mid-range Shaman, so... I kind of can see him bringing it here into the team league, but it is tricky. That would be and really interesting. Um, have we seen a mid-range Shaman played yet? I think Silent Storm did it. The first. I, I'm pretty sure Sli Silent Storm did it already once. I think it was week one that he yeah. played mid-range Shaman. Because we played, right. uh, we played Team Celestial t week two, and we were considering them bringing mi uh, mid-range Shaman because he played it in week one. Yeah, Sunstorm was doing very well for Team Celestial in the first two weeks. I think he just went uh, undefeated for the first two weeks. He brought a Shaman the first week, which, uh, if I recall, was uh, pretty well teched against aggro. It had, like, the zombie chows and whatnot, which some people sometimes decide to cut uh, to slow it down. Like, they'll put a one of instead of bringing two, and they won't put in defend of Argus. So if I recall, I think that was the decklist that he was playing uh, in the first week. All right, well, getting to the next game, Gara. Playing Paladin versus Tiddler's Mage, we'll finally get to see if it's Tempo or Freeze. It's, it's an, a cool matchup. I mean, I really want to see what uh, Gar is playing for a Paladin. I'm also excited by that. What if they are bringing the Tempo Mage uh, Team Celestial? So it's gonna be good. Yeah, like there's some plays that really make uh, the Tempo Mage versus Paladin a little clunky. At but times. the Flame Waker is really good, just to get the hero power from the Paladin, the Master of Battle. Yeah, just to yeah. counter it really quickly, I think getting the coin as a Tempo Mage is one of those things where you know it matters a lot for Rogue, it's the most accepted, best deck to get the coin in, or the best class. Uh, and then you get Tempo Mage, which also can get a huge swing turns with their coin plays, with the Flame Waker. Sure enough, uh, we're going to see also... If if it is mid-range Paladin, whether or not Gara is ready for the early game version. Um, given that Eloise teched in Explosive Sheep, uh, Gara might also bring a more anti-aggro Paladin, so I would be seeing like two Zombie Chow maybe, and then the usual mid-range lineup, which would be really good against Tempo Mage in my experience. But that's a lot of speculation. Uh, could, you, could you ever get the... Uh... Like the Harrison Jones tech in Tempo Mage? I mean, it's a tech that's been played quite frequently. Um, 
I mean, that could also make the matchup a bit more bearable as a tempo mage player. It's a, it's a marginal thing, but, you know, those things can matter. You're denying the opponent a two-for-one, maybe, with his true silver, and you're getting an extra card, which is tempo mage, can be really important. I mean, you, when you run out of cards as tempo, uh, you're pretty much out of it. This yeah. is a strange observation that I just made, but I think the character portraits are different. What do you mean? Like, Tiddler looks different. From the portals from, from last weeks, weeks, or...? Yeah, just something I noticed. That's okay, I... <laughs> Tiddler, I, think. I didn't notice yet, but... <laughs> I, I didn't notice at all. Um, I guess I just... Didn't pay enough attention. Oh my god, Trump. Your, your attention to detail. Hey, I like Stop these fear, things. Ten, like, ten. These portraits are really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to look into it. Maybe you're right. Mm hmm. Uh, I want to see the mage from Tiddler. Like, it can also be a freeze mage. I know that Tiddler is, uh, or at least plays sometimes freeze mage. I don't know if he really likes the deck or if he is also, if he likes tempo mage still more. And you see, everyone is, or you see, a lot of teams are bringing freeze mage. So maybe. Team uh, Celestial went to the same conclusion and is also gonna be uh, playing uh, the free match. And also Gara with the Paladin, like he went to Dreamac, uh, Dreamac Valencia, and a lot of people were playing uh, Pal Agro Paladin there, and it went really good there at Dreamac Valencia. So the finals were two people that uh, played Agro Paladin. So maybe Gara came to the same conclusion and is gonna bring Agro Paladin here. I won't be surprised. That would be very nice. It's one of those decks that used to exist and never quite made it to the top of the, you know, the competitive metagame and tournament play. Uh, but of recent memory, it's been cropping up more and more uh, because it's actually competing with other decks. And I think the new tools they got from GVG, not that they're very new anymore, but um, the tools they got from GVG really pushed it even further, uh, like up the power curve. Yeah, it is really cool how the top six decks um minus rogue all have a like alternate version um paladin not considered one of the top six i guess but mage uh, warrior druid even like all almost all of the decks right now have two versions at least that you can bring and it's always hard to guess which one it is yeah so we're like we're, we're basing our you know matchups based on classes but i think we're at the point where this is almost like the more expansions come out the less and less the class itself is going to be impactful in the way you have to approach your you know your own lineup and the more you're gonna have to consider archetypes it's already very true you know warlock is probably the perfect example of that where you have a single class that has you know what four workable archetypes at any point um i mean that's a lot to play around with Right, and if this uh, new expansion, the Grand Tournament, does it right, we're going to see almost all the classes get another like control variant also, just because of the Inspire mechanic. So, we're going to see like every deck have three different varieties. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, and oh it's boy. going to be excessively exactly. hard, and it's looking like you were right. The Agro Pally from Gara, I think, <laughs> is going to be coming up. Yeah. Oh, that's Defender of Argus, it's not. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> Garg it's, ruining it's his own decks again. What's up with this, Garg? You gotta stop this. I can't make predictions anymore. I'm still thinking it is uh, an aggro kind of uh, Peldin. I, I, there are some versions that are playing like one Quadamaster or one Defender of August because it stacks really well with the the dudes you play at turn 3 sometimes. So. Oh, and oh it is god, a Mech Mage. Whoa. Oh my god, what's uh, going on here? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Somebody help. But do you, do you expect it? Like from Gara's side, uh, you just see a mad scientist, yeah, mad scientist, every mage deck is playing with mad scientists, so... Do you already what? see that this is the mech mage from this point? I don't think so, but I mean, double snow chugger with the possibility of blast mage? That is just very dangerous. Oh boy, oh, mech barber too. That's uh, going to be insane. Frostbolt. This is a good start from the mage side. Uh, next turn we've got Mech Warper Snow Chugger, and if everything goes right, you could Snow Chugger Tink Master. It's funny that Gara does like Gara has no really option. It's just Lepronome Hero Power, but there was still no, it was still really hard to say what that was for a trap. What that what Gara is facing for kind of mage there. 
Now that's a really unfortunate turn three from an aggro paladin, and it goes to show why most aggro paladins don't put Defender of Argus into their deck. That's another clunky card, which uh, might ruin their aggro draw. Yeah, I mean, as good as the aggro pally is at getting Divine Shielded minions, whereby they can very often get good value out of it because they can, you know, force the opponent to use multiple resources on it. Uh, and in, in that case, I guess Defend of Argus seems to make sense in that line of logic where you're increasing the resilience of your minions. At the same time, it's also making it so those clunky hands are just worse. The times where you don't get the Divine Shields. Yeah, it's so tough for the Aggro Paladin to get all these four drops, the True Solar, the Consecration, and the not often seen Defender of Argus. And, and what do you do with this True Silver? Like, you know, if you attack in the Snow Chugger, you can't use it next turn, so it's it feels really bad to use the True Silver here, maybe. And you know that you can't attack with it. Yeah, and wow. in this case, it's going to be worse. wasn't expecting Snow Chugger Technician to actually work on turn four, but Tiddler has done it. That's a lot of pressure. Is that a new card? The Snow Chugger Technician? <laughs> So do you silence off that chugger? Uh, I, I know, I know, I feel exactly the same I, <laughs> if I'm in that position, but I, I'm just trying to figure out how do you get out of this, uh, this mess? Uh, yeah. Alright, your choice is here to play either a 2-3 to kill one thing with Consecration or to play a 2-1. So, feels bad, man. All the feels. And do you make that hero? the 1-1 one, one dude with it, or do you just defy favor for one extra draw to hope you draw into an equality what some of these versions are playing? I, I have to imagine see you that. want to use defy favor earlier rather than later since your opponent is so aggressive and there's one spare part so the hand is just getting smaller. Yeah, I think Owl divine favor is the play, but it's so hard to... you cry while making it. Yeah. And sometimes you just gotta toughen up and make the potentially winning play, so if Gar picks up inequality, that's going to be pretty good for him. But unfortunately, not quite what he was looking for. Although Defend of Argus gets a bit better. Oh my goodness. Well, that's convenient. Yeah, at this moment it just feels really sad, and if you go into an, an aggro against aggro matchup, it's just the, the one that gets the burst, uh, the board first, is normally gonna be ahead the whole game. And that's pretty much what we can see here. I mean, equality would be a saving grace for Garo. I think he would be able to turn the game around in, like, if he had that. Because, you know, Tiddler's next turn would consist of a spider tank in this specific case, and very little else. Yeah. Um, so all those one ones are gonna have to carry. And Gara knows also already that if there is a fireball in the hand, he's already dead. But he can't do anything about it. Now, when you look at this board, you also kind of make the wonder of how are you going to get Inspire to work in the next expansion? Because there is this kind of board control just spirals out of the way. Like, can you actually afford to play a card and then use a hero ability? So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of more control tools next expansion is going to have. Yeah, I've got the I've got the feeling initially, you know, Inspire is an amazing and an amazingly flavorful mechanic, right? But I mean, balance-wise, or you know, based on the way the Hearthstone plays, how does it fit in the whole picture? So that's a bit uh, that's a bit more difficult maybe to implement. Oh well. Wow. I hope it's gonna be something uh, that it will be really good. And the, most of the inspire effects that we get now, they look a bit slow or really hard to pull off. But if there are some cards that stack really well with it, it might be a bit. It might be a big thing. Yeah, we'll have to see. So right now, Gara does he have a board wide potential? So one, one, two. He could, but he's gonna be taking some damage at the very least. If he uses his weapon instead of uh, using Defender. Because if you use Consecration, you risk running into Counterspell. I guess it's kind of risky, but... I think well, you expect an Entity it. here, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can trade everything on board, not taking any damage. So Consecration is going to free him from that. But what a board he's got. You know that you're dead in six turns. <laughs> oh, wow! Oh. <laughs> 
Wait, have I missed something about Mega Mage? Seems like uh, Celestial had the exact same thought that we had. <laughs> uh, we actually ran Mech Mage with Fel Reaver also, and uh, we had to all submit decks like way before, so it's not like they saw our game and then used Fel Reaver also, but we both came to the same conclusion. That's pretty cool, seeing the Mech Mage uh, now use Fel Reaver also. So the conclusion is, if it's good in Mech Shaman, why is it not good in Mech Mage? Exactly, actually. Right, I like that. That's a good. That's a good train of thought. I think it's super sensible. Can't believe we haven't seen that earlier in the development of the decks. Um, I guess at some point it's because Beat Game Hunter has fallen off, which is a little bit of a surprise. But the top decks right now, there don't, uh, there aren't a lot of BJH targets. Like uh, mid range Hunter doesn't run Doctor Boom a lot of the time. And Patron Warrior doesn't run any Doctor or doesn't run any BGH targets, so your BGH gets a lot worse. So therefore, BGH disappears. So you start putting in Fell Reavers. Yeah. Soon enough, we're gonna be seeing Anima Golem. <laughs> so there's no healing in that Paladin deck outside of Truce over Champion, right? And even if there were, I guess if the Archmage lives, you're still gonna be able to get infinite fireballs. You need more than a heal here. You also need to kill off the Antonidas. And Gara yeah. sees it already coming and it's like, yeah, I can do both. Yeah, it's one or the other. I can't uh, I can't really deal with the Fell Reaver and the Archmage. So Celestial Steam is going to be going up 4-1, I believe, over Temple Storm. And Tiddler's out. I mean, he's done with his uh, with his day. So well done by him, locking up uh, the Mech Mage and the Warrior. So there are only... So Tiddler is out of the series and there are only two decks left and I think it is uh, the Shaman from Silent Storm and the Warlock from Frozen Ice. Right, uh, Frozen Ice yeah. has been playing very aggressive approach, like has been taking a very aggressive approach to, to fighting in these in this, in this team league. Uh, we'll see if he brings something a bit slower this time, I mean Warlock has plenty of archetypes to choose from. Shaman too. Mm -hmm. Do they? They've got the about <laughs> well, two, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess if it's Soundstorm, it's fine. It's kind of like Hawkeye, who could be playing any type of Shaman. Although he does favor, you know, mid-range and so has Soundstorm in the past. Um, they could be playing either of those, so... I think the I theme for today's Celestial lineup is decks that you weren't expecting Celestial to bring. So, uh, Hamlock and mid-range Shaman, sure. Murloc shot. You want to talk about unexpected, you go Murloc, and then you've got the surprise factor seal. I can't guarantee a win, but I can guarantee the surprise. Murlocs can still be really strong. I think I lost yesterday on the ladder on stream with it. I was just at it turn 4 after the Druid went for an insane Murloc turn. Uh, you might see it in some decks. Yep. And one day there will be a Murloc metagame, and then Trump can tech in the Hungry Crab again, <laughs> and then just go... <laughs> Full surprise on everyone. Uh, wait the day. Hungry uh, the good old days. <laughs> hey, there's gonna be a Murloc in the next expansion, probably, yeah. according to the art, at least. Yeah. I can tell you already what it's gonna do. It's gonna be Inspire, summon a 1-1 one, one Murloc scout. And then, maybe people will try to play Murloc again. Makes sense. It'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be cool, like, mechs are already really popular, and some love to pirates, some love to Murlocs. It will be cool. Yeah, but I ask you the one question. Where are the tree ants? What happened to them? There's like Soul of the Forest and Scenarius and Force of Nature, which really doesn't count because they're dead as soon as they come on the board. So, where are the tree ants? Are we getting any? Ever? Did you uh, see the art? There is probably going to be a tree ant. Oh my god, okay. A volcanic lumber wasn't even labeled a tree ant, was he? If, I, if I'm not mistaken. It's like, nope. we might get a tree, but maybe not a tree end. I'm tired of trees. I think uh, that card is a little too big to be a tree end. Yeah. I guess they'd have to be... Is there another name we could name those and still label them tree ends? I don't know. Like, uh, we should be working on a tree end archetype for Truid. Oh, man. Temple Storm is really down score-wise. I mean, even if they get perfect cues, now Gar has given away the fact that he's playing Agro Pally. That's good against Mech Shaman, so that could be a good lineup, potentially. Alright, we're gonna see Eloise up with, for the quote-unquote third time with her mage. 
Explosive Sheep against Shaman is a pretty good card, I hear. It's not too bad. Uh, if this is Mech Shaman, uh, it could crush Mage in time. We'll see. It, it, I think it will never be bad just because of the hero power uh, of the Shaman where it makes the totems and you can always kill the totems also with it. It's, we will see. I'm really surprised, or I really want to see what uh, what Silent Storm is gonna do with the shaman. If he is really gonna bring that uh, that mid range shaman, I will be I will be I will not be surprised, but I will be I will really want to see it. I mean, mid range shaman is kind of a dying breed nowadays in uh, in Hearthstone. It's one of those it's one of those decks that just comes back in once in a while, piloted by great players, and then you think, wow, this is good, I can do this. Then you pick it up, and it doesn't seem to be nearly as consistent as they get it to work. So, but I see a lot of mechs in this deck, so I think it's uh, it's just a mech shaman, and it's pretty, it's pretty good pretty also good against uh, mage. If there is also a Ragnaros and uh, maybe a boom and the fell reavers are sometimes hard to deal with. Yeah, what were you gonna say, Trump? I think mech shaman's a pretty good guess. Is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I refuse. I don't think that mech warper is a giveaway. It's just a good two three for two, man. Don't don't overread into this. All right. Well, Cogmaster. Well, that's a good start for the Max Shaman. Two bad cards, but two really good cards. I can fix anything. And a reasonable start for the Freeze Mage as well, getting to start with the Scientist. It's always important to have that Mad Scientist. Uh, it's with the loot order, maybe the only two drop. You can play the Doomsayer, but it feels a bit early already for a Doomsayer, and it's so important to have something early in, on the board instead of using your hero power. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Well, that's a pretty sweet card, however. Like, getting rid... Oh, this is a bit tricky, though. Yeah, Sunstorm's actually got a pretty tricky turn. There's something like four possible plays here. Yeah, all of which don't feel like they're optimal. I mean, the obvious one is like coin power maze, deal with it. But then you're giving them the secret. And you kind of want to keep the earth shock for doomsayers is my guess. So there's a good chance he just keeps that for later use. Yeah, it's pretty early already for an earth shock with this board presence. I think doomsayer is going to be a bigger issue. Mm -hmm. Is he going phase? Oh my oh, god, wow. he is. Oh. Wow! <laughs> I didn't expect storm. That. Well, uh, see, that's one of the possibilities leave, we didn't consider. He leaves the trade up on board, but he, I think, he is planning on earth shocking uh, turn three with the mech warper, getting the buff on the mech warper, and just earth shocking the mad scientist when but it leaves up for a two one. Doomsayer is an issue then. Interesting. Yeah, it is. So, I, 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 I will not trade too, but I, that is, I think, the uh, way of thinking how Silent yeah. Storm is going. He's definitely like, thinking that way. I think that the line of thinking is exactly that one, where he gets a turn 3 Mech Warper to become a 4-5, five, four, uh, which makes it a bit tricky to handle. Oh, that should be enough, right? A Crackle with a Doomsayer play eventually. You can probably mix in some damage here and there. Yeah, what an aggressive line. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive, but if it pays off, I guess you almost always win. Yeah, but it feels a bit early because there are not many minions in the in the hand to play it that aggressively. Yeah, the top deck fireball is getting thrown out. <laughs> yeah, always show the top deck one. Yeah, make Silent Storm wish he hadn't gone for that aggressive play, and now, now that's what that that's a tricky turn. That's kind of the reason why um, Shaman sometimes feels inconsistent. Yeah, you've run out of stuff. You give uh, turn 5 and 6, but it's very rigid and linear. Oh wow, what a crazy card for Eloise. So is that a turn where you Doomsayer or just Frostbolding? Hmm. That'd be interesting. You Doomsay because... Um, you could say Doomsay because you want to deny their 5 drop. Um, Fel Reaver is played in every one of them, and yeah. possibly something else. You know I that like, uh, I like it. Yeah, you know that Silent Storm had a weak turn four because he played Totem and Totem, so that makes his hand either Fel Reaver, Fire Elemental type, or just all spells. So makes the call to Doomsayer. That's a good call here. 
And it, yeah. it's even better to put the Doomsayer on here to because you have the Emperor in hand to play your turn 6 Emperor to put Shaman even in a more defensive spot. Yeah, you're going to get the initiative on turn 6 with one of the rare... This is one of the rare cases where the, the Freeze Mage can actually get ahead on board. So... Understandable. I think he was hesitating. You know, if it had been a spell damage totem, he would have gone for the Crackle with a 75% success oh, rate. Oh, wow. <laughs> but... Yeah. There's the Emperor. What a tricky card to handle a Silent Storm. Nothing he does here is going to really do what he wants. It is a bit too early to leave it up. At 29 lives from the mage still, I think he just has to hope he's gonna crackle right here. Yeah. You told him oh, up an Oyotron and Crackle? Because that's the only play. If you start with Crackle, then you have to take that line of play. There's nothing else opened up. So Fire Elemental could be the alternative. Alright. A tough climb for Silent Storm ahead. Um, we could actually see Silent Storm fatigue with this stuff against Freeze Mage, so that's <laughs> going to be interesting. Especially with all the discounts from Emperor. <laughs> yeah, with all the, the cheap cards, I guess. There's a good chance that uh, Sunstorm is going to get milled by playing the Fell Reaver. Perhaps. I really like the Telnos Frostbolt thing here, just because it trades so well. Yeah, yeah you don't that. have to waste the Fireball, that's right. Well, Frostbolt might be better uh, into Fell Reavers, but to just freeze them. <laughs> and mill them more. You yeah. buy time to just keep milling. <laughs> you know what? That's good. And it's just like cheaper. Maybe you can get better use of it. Yeah. Although at this point they're kind of all the same cost. Almost. Well, lava burst is a pretty good answer here, right? I think at this point um, the mage has so few cards and there's already two discounts. It's like, oh, whatever, just leave it up. I think I would have gone annoyed with Tron Fell Reaver there. But the the value that Eloise got from the the Emperor is not good on the cards. Like getting a Frostbolt and a Healbot cheaper, it's not what you were looking for. She really needs this card right now from the Telnos to start off. Well, I mean, you can still stall quite a bit with Blizzard and Sheep. Like, you don't have to Sheep here. It would almost be reckless, I think, to just Sheep these two minions. They do you're, really nothing, so you have to wait a bit. You're just going to ignore this part. I would mm -hmm. like to see here the card draw from the Thomas first, and maybe you just put on the heal bot because it's, it's, it does half of the work what it normally does, and it contests the boards pretty well. It's a pretty, a pretty sad hand with no card draw, no Acolytes or Arcane Intellects or Loot Hoarders again. And that is what the, the sheep is probably a tech card from the Loot Hoarder, but in both ways the Loot Hoarder will do a lot of work too. Yeah, it's an yeah, interesting it's... game because uh, the mech shaman is in a bad spot since the freeze mage has so much health and the freeze mage is in a bad spot because the hand is really bad. So who's truly in a bad spot? Uh, gonna depend a lot on upcoming draws. And I don't... Uh, freeze don't... mage looking for any of her card draw and mech shaman just gonna carry out the fell reaver, fell reaver plan. It's going to be pretty YOLO with the double fill reavers. There is no way you can just not go YOLO with this hand. Yeah, there's a huge like reward potential behind that play. So. Uh, Arcane is like pretty nice yeah. pickup here. Yeah, that's going to be really solid. So how often do you just Frostbolt the, um, the fell reaver instead of blizzarding? Oh, oh Lothed is... Loth is gone. It's pretty big. Well, you're still at 29 lives, so taking one time 8 damage is not that bad at all. So you can That's mill him even more. Yeah. I don't know how many cards there, is left, there are left. But... And Eloise is drawing some pretty good late game card. cards. Yeah, definitely worth it to Frostbolt, um, since yeah. there are only 13 cards. You can get rid of the entire deck next turn. Wow, that's a lot of milling. I don't think you can actually play it. If you play Fell Reaver, you're getting into the, the range where you get fatigued, like pretty much guaranteed next turn. Well, here's but the thing. If you thing. don't play it, how do you win? You're guaranteed to uh, fatigue already, so might as well play the Fell Reaver anyways. 
Yeah. There's like there's no way not to play it because otherwise your win condition is just gone. You have no way to really deal that damage and push through. Um, but there's a blizzard in Eloise's hand, so Soundstorm's gonna have a bit of a rough day. Yeah, right. there is a world where Eloise doesn't manage to draw into something to follow up the blizzard, and then Soundstorm will just attack two times, and that might work out. Yeah, this is the hand that Silent Storm has to do it with. Like, these crackle and the, the lava burst. That's all he's gonna get, I guess. I think all the cards that are left now in the deck will be just gone. Drawing a Frostbolt, another freeze effect. Yeah, rest in peace deck. There is no <laughs> way Sunstorm is drawing a single wow. thing. And, and they stack together, like if there are two Fell Reavers, it's just in this card of six cards. Yeah. I'm out of cards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Thrall. At least he's not dying to fatigue, because the Fell Reaper will stop drawing from your deck as soon as it's empty. Initially, we thought, you know, before testing it, that maybe it would just keep milling you through fatigue, but that's not the case. So, that's one upside, I guess. Yeah, there's... Missed the attack with the heal bot, but it's not gonna matter. Maybe it's... Indecisive. Sound so... right. Looks like she was planning to set up so that the explosive sheep would kill off as many Fell Reaver as possible. Yeah, that's what I think she was trying to... to I think up. it's a bit too late to play for a control game now, but... It's... I mean, she's going to get an Ice Barrier if the Mad Scientist dies. There was one played already? I forget. There was already one played, yeah. Okay, so the second one in hand is guaranteed to be the, the last one. Alright, so Mad Scientist is just going to be a waste. It's just a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Hmm. Good news for Sunstorm that you got the Taunt Totem, but... I mean, that is the best Totem you could have gotten. Or maybe Healing Totem, too. But I don't... Uh, like, I always can deal with this current board. Yeah. Are we going through the motions? No, yeah, no. Because it's always possible for the mage hand to look something like Forsen's hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have the worst. Be really good here. So yeah, it'll be really like good. The first hand, like double flame strike and then double frost nova. Oh man, just taking it slowly here. No reason to rush into into anything. I mean, Eloise can't be worried about anything, really, from Soundstorm's hand. And Soundstorm is going to call it a day for now, so he's going to give Temple Storm the second win. Well, that's not a bad one. So interesting also now to know, now Temple Storm knows that there is the Mech, Ma Mech Shaman from Silent Storm. It's, was maybe, it was maybe a bit more likely that it will be the Mech Shaman, but he was also known for bringing mid-range uh, Shaman, so it's important information also for Temple Storm. Yeah. Do you think that's going to change anything about the way they're going to queue their classes? Because do they have a class that's specifically, you know, strong against Mech Shaman? Because I know Mech Shaman has a fairly, you know, weird matchup against uh, Agro Pally, for instance. So Gara could queue that into uh, the lineup from Celestial. I think that's going to be a really one of the better matchups probably for Gara. It might just pick up something. Uh, it might also just really matter in the Mulligan already. For like a rogue, you keep all the early removal you can get and against the midrange shaman you're maybe might sometimes keep an 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 shredder or an Ezra drake to get also some minions off and now you might look just more for removal yeah it's at this point where you actually regret bringing face paladin over midrange paladin because i know gar's played midrange paladin and uh the midrange paladin is so much better against zoo and against mech shaman than the face one uh, it's possible that Paladin ends up being the, uh, the face Paladin ends up being the deck that sinks them, given that Celestial's remaining decks are Zoo and Mech Shaman. But I think Agro Pally is pretty good against Mech Shaman, unless I'm mistaken, because they don't run the Lightning Storm. So I think it's probably one of the few matchups in which I'm happy to play Agro Pally um, by a tiny, by, by a smaller margin, I guess, than if I were running against a Warlock. So I mean, I'm not sure Zoo would be bad. Like, absolutely bad. Handlock would be okay. As aggro pally, I guess. No, Handlock is the dream. Yeah. So I think Gara might be able to pilot that aggro pally deck to victory against one of the two decks. 
Um, but like, how how does it do against Mali Lock, for instance? You know, Dragon Warlock. I'm not uh, sure. I think it, is, it will be really hard. There is a lot of heal in the deck. The deck is not like Handlock that you draw a lot. So I think it is. It, it is. I think it's the hardest matchup if you look at Warlock decks. Yeah. Okay. Um, Face Paladin tends to be good against all types of Warlocks, though. Yeah. Wait, did I say that right? Face Paladin yeah. tends to be bad against all types of Warlocks. Wait, all right. hold on. No, it's, pretty, it's <laughs> good against think... Handlock. <laughs> it, it's very good. So I, I was confused by the way bad. that you said that it was the best against that specific one. That specific one, yeah, okay. That's, uh, that makes sense. Alright, so it's going to be the Warlock Mirror Match. Alright, I'm loving those when I don't know what they bring. Because basically it's all speculation. Like, there's no way for us to really know what they brought specifically. And also for Eloise, because she, I think she, the first week or first two weeks, she was handlock or a demon lock, and now she was switching to handlock, so she can bring everything. Well, it's looking like there's a zoo deck with an, well, it looks like zoo, not even zoo demon at the lock. Bottom. Yeah. If there is a Dire Wolf Elf on it, ooh, it, it looks really aggressive at least. Yeah, and Zeus had up um, a nod to all of those strong decks of weapons right now. So yeah, much so that Zeus running weapon destruction. And I think yeah. this is yeah, this is Eloise's perspective. So it might be just on Zoo Demon Zoo Mirror. If it's a Zoo Mirror match, it'll come down to like who gets the the earlier curve. And sometimes I think like if they are both played perfectly, a lot of the time also the juggles like they really matter where the knives go. Implosions also a pretty big deal. There are some swing cards like a Void Walker or, or for the Void Caller and uh, implosions that can really get it off. But normally the one that with the with the more aggressive starts uh, is really strong. I'm surprised at the Voidwalker Mulligan because uh looks like Voidwalker coined Voidwalker into Direwolf Alpha would have been pretty good. But Eloise picks up an even better card. Yeah, Flame Imp on a starting hand seems like a pretty good card. Yeah, this is the dream. You uh yep. You not only start off against the zoo who doesn't play anything on turn one, but you also get the flexibility of the Flame Imp and the Voidwalker. So you're Ooh, ready for anything. Like a Flame Imp was pretty bad, bad here. Just only the Flame Imp, it will trade perfectly for a Frozen Ice with the Abuse of Surge and on the egg. Oh! Oh, That's wow. Pretty... That's brutal. That is just brutal. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's gonna take everything for Frozen Ice to climb out of this situation already. Let's pray for the Hellfire Zoo variant. Well, it's not quite over yet. There's a chance that... Frozen Ice can pick up, you know, as we said, a mid-game swing card like Implosion could do wonders. Yep. It's not this quite is, over. This is the agony of Zoo versus Zoo when the opposing Zoo gets a really, really good start. Like, not only do you pass turn one and they play two turn one cards, but your turn two play got completely countered. Yeah, it's looking yeah, pretty no, lopsided. Go ahead. And now you're just looking with, yeah, let's play the Void Walker, and it uh, Flame Imp just trades way too perfectly into it. Yeah, one of those agonizing things like, I can't even play the Abusive Sergeant because there's a Void Walker in the way, so I have the power overwhelming it. So, do you ever preemptively remove that egg and the Nerugan that comes from it? I think that's a good question. Um,. You can't what? expect your opponent to have something because it was turn two egg, and I think an egg might have been kept. Uh, hard to say, really, without since the screen wasn't showing. But if the egg was kept and you paid attention to it, then you can expect your opponent to have something to have buffed the egg. But but this is really gonna be a big deal in the Void Walker. Then there has to be a power overwhelming and. If there was only the empty flame imp, I would say you probably trade because then it is in range of the abuse of surgeon, and then it makes the trades way worse for you. You're right, You're right. In saying that it's a lot easier not to trade here because you have the void walker. But if you didn't, then it would be a very strong consideration to like kill it with the owl and then direwolf alpha with the flame imp. Yeah, 
All right, so again, a pretty late card for Frozen Ice. That's not really helping the situation immediately, and it might not be the case. Like it might be the case that turn seven, I wouldn't say it doesn't happen because it probably will, but it might be too late to really try to stabilize with Doctor Boom. So we'll see what he ends up pulling off here. Really, nothing is good yeah. here. It's a really weird zero mirror where the one is just way ahead of the other. You need a comeback card like Hellfire. Can you imagine the Hellfire? Yeah, right now? that'd be crazy. Boom. It's one of those cards that used to see play in Zoo, right? Back in Nax Ramas. Like some people ran it, um, but it hasn't seen play since. I think GVG, like post GVG and post BRM, the deck was refined to the point where Hellfire has just been cut out completely. I'm not sure if it's refined or rather a change in the meta because for a time being, there was a lot of Zoo out there. And in that case, you can actually have Hellfire as a counter view tech. Yeah. Uh, it's the, kind of a consequence that there's less zoo that you don't run Hellfire. It would be good against patrons as well, I guess ish. But that's not your goal is not to really have to deal with the patron board. You want to kind of be done with it by the point it happens. There are a lot of times that it also works works against you, I think. So that's yeah. why that's why people are not really considering or not playing it much at all. Good point. That's a good point. So that's Eloise's turn to pick up the initiative. I, I think the uh, the direwolf, like the, the knives, could end up being a big deal. But either way, the board can just be clear for sure, no matter what. And then Frozen Eyes is gonna have to try to climb back in. Right. It's just a decision of here. the decision of how to most optimally do it. And I would think it would be direwolf alpha. See if the knife hits the Nerubian, and then you use the Owl. Uh, this is using the mana a little bit less efficiently, and if the knife hits, uh, you trade a little less efficiently. Uh, it's a marginal difference in the way the tournament was played, but yeah, I see. I think seeing where the knives go is probably the first step. Well, Frozen Ice with a really top heavy or situational hand. I guess Doomguard is the only thing you could remotely even think of doing here. There's like nothing else that stands out. Yeah, also painful to send it against the 3-1, but you do what you gotta do. How many times do you do it in this? That you just, with still a lot of cards in hand that you just play that Doomguard just because you have to. Uh, pretty sad. Yeah. And also, oh, 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 oh. wow, that that uh, is not good for Frozen Ice. Exactly five mana, just enough to get the defender on the board, pump up two more damage, and buff up the minions so they're pretty much unkillable. Not that he was already really at, or not that Eloise right. was already really at. <laughs> right. And uh, wow, Frozen Ice with the worst zoo <laughs> hand I think I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Oh this is getting worse. What is this? Well, Frozen Ice losing the game to Eloise. So Eloise, I think, is done now with the Mage and the Warlock being locked. She did her job. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, how does it feel when you're the last one to have to... I know Brody was put in that position a few times where he was the last mm -hmm. player and he had to kind of carry the torch and hope to get that last win. Yeah, it must be a lot of pressure, I think. Yeah, it's like you don't in in the other tournaments you don't want to lose for yourself, but in this team tournament you feel a bit more pressure maybe because you also don't want to lose for your team. That I think it feels even worse to lose for your team than lose for yourself. Yeah, well, it seems to make sense, right? It kind of follows that you're losing other players' chance at mm -hmm. winning. So, but obviously you still know lose. it is. You still know it's a team league, and it can happen to everyone. So uh, I think every team takes it pretty positively. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, at this point, we've noticed that not it's not like one player who systematically has the same treatment. It's every player's turn comes eventually. So I think at this point, we're just waiting on Kibler, right? Like, I think Kibler is the only guy who needs <laughs> who needs to get taught a lesson of uh, you know, how to lose a game. I don't know. At this point, it's looking so insane. 8-0. Yeah, it's possible that Kibler just figured it out and we'll go, what, 14-0 on Kibler? Yeah, and then he'll win the uh, five thousand dollars if I'm not mistaken. You know, premium that goes to the player who performed the best in the entire league. So that's a pretty good thing for him if he gets there. Now, 
this is, you know, we're going down to the last few decks um, from 4 1 to 4 3. So Temple Storm's on the climb back up. The Grim Patron Warrior, tentatively from Hyped, and the Rogue, two classes that he's very proficient with against the Zoo from Frozen Ice and the Mech Shaman. Do you have any maybe insight on which of these is likely to take it? Like, what is the weakest link of uh, Celestial Steam here between both? At this point, you have a bit of really just a guessing game. So the warrior is strong against the zoo, but and it's uh, okay against the shaman. The paladin, on the other hand, is weak against the zoo, but it's okay against the shaman. And the rogue is uh, it's generally okay against both. So it might come down to unlucky draws, I guess, coming from... Because the Temple Storm's lineup doesn't seem like it's that bad. It's just that Mech Shaman needs to land a win. Oh. Yeah, and, and Zoo needs to get ahead. The game, the game pattern is really good against the Zoo, but if the Zoo just sometimes snowballs, and you saw this a really aggressive Zoo with Dire Wolf and, and even an Ooze, so that might matter. Right, I think That's it's all about... Side, though. Uh, oh, that Frozen was Eloise's side, side, okay. That's the more traditional one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna see Hyped against Sandstorm playing Warrior versus Mech Shaman. So again, oh, that's not one they wanted. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, Mech Shaman has a pretty good matchup in this case. We'll see how things develop, though. I mean, sometimes you don't get a start. The Warrior has the axe. He's got the armor smith. He's got everything. So it's a little surprising I mean, because uh, sometimes you equate Mech Shaman to like almost. <laughs> Phase Hunter to some extent, but it just turns out that <laughs> it plays out a, quite a lot differently, whereas Patron Warrior is really good against Phase Hunter. It's just not as good as in Mech Shaman because the numbers are different and the way that Shaman kills you is different. They can sometimes also get a you know War of Attrition. They're always going to have something on the board and then that makes it so it's a little bit more awkward for you. Like going through Stoneclaw Totem as a Warrior player can be excruciating. And if they're curving behind a Noyotrons, again, that's another great card against Warrior. Um, but having to handle very early in the game, it's a huge problem. Oh, I mean, I wonder, I think Hype's got to be playing Patron, right? He's not going to be in Control Warrior here. I think there was a week that he did it. One week or two weeks ago, I'm pretty sure he did. And he played a ridiculous game against Zale, whereas Zale played Patron Warrior and Saleh missed like I think three damage, and that well at the end it may it costed Saleh the game against right. Hyped his control warrior because he had like shield block into a brawler or something like that. I remember that actually. I remember that I was casting that game. You're right. Hype did bring a control warrior once mm. that I've seen, uh, and Saleh didn't have enough time to get the extra three damage in. When you're up against a uh, team known for their aggressive lineup, though, like Celestial. Well, actually, that's even more of a reason to play uh, Control Warrior 2, I guess. But it is going to be Patron Warrior here. Well, yes, it is. That's yeah. a inner rage. And, I mean, this is a good hand for Soundstorm. That's a great hand. Yeah, I don't even know where to start. This both is so players, good. Yeah, both players have pretty decent hands. It's a bit that Hyped is missing a weapon. Yeah, Soundstorm is playing the Does He Have Fiery War Axe game. And Sunstorm yeah. is going to guess yes. And the oh, guess wow. is going to force him to play the Anoyotron. Hmm. It's not it's not that bad. I mean with the um, Okay. I was gonna say Cruel Taskmaster in a rage can handle like a Zapomatic that's hidden between enemy lines, but now you've got the whirlwind and the ghoul together, that's you know, even easier in uh, many respects. And it's really interesting how the Fury of Fiery War Axe twists opening so much because the um, the Cog Cog Master, yeah, the Cog Master is such a stronger play, even without needing the coin. But just because you fear the Fiery War Axe, you have to play it this way. Well, depending on how your attitude against Fiery War Axe is, some people just play the uh, Cog Master anyways. Some people like. Are really ambitious and start off with whirling Zapomatic. Yeah, I remember Soundstorm was uh, facing off against a Shaman once, and he was so afraid of Cogmaster that he coined out a Wrath to kill it on turn one, and then he got Zapomatic, you know, back to back, and then he lost. But it's like some people respect that Cogmaster a lot more than others, so I guess sometimes it can feel like a big threat to other players. 
Go ahead. It's still important to always kill the mechs off there. Synergy with the mechs, with the weapons, with the mech warper that gets cheaper. That is like, a mech warper is pretty likely at turn 2 sometimes, so... I'm always more scared of the mech warper and the zeppo medic than on the Cockmaster, even if it is a pretty big threat. So far this is a good game. Both players are following their game plan. Um, Hyped gets to go into Death Spite into his choice of Patron or Acolyte of Pain the next turn. And Sunstorm's got a really good curve. Yeah. What's good as we'll well is that uh, he's got the Whirlwind as well on top, so... Yeti is not a bad pickup at all here. It's the only minion that survives the attack of the Despite here. Right. Or from the max at least. The execute would hurt so much if he Yeah, has. that's true, that's true. Oh man. Well if this survives it, like if it hit, if it gets hit, you're dealing six damage to the enemy's phase. So I that's think true, you're still okay with it. The bad news is you played into something the opponent already has an answer for. So right. Well, you're getting the two drop at least in this specific case. I wonder how much this will end up being good or bad. Yeah, I mean, if I that two drops is apomatic. I might be thinking about doing Grim Patron. So set up mm. a board where he might be able to get himself more armor of the armorsmith, but he doesn't have the Warsong Commander. Maybe those are good trading tools anyway. Yeah, a little too ambitious to do Grim Patron now. Probably Acolyte, uh, Armorsmith. Hmm. Looks or like he's... neither. He's thinking of slamming afterwards, maybe on the minion that pops out. Hmm. Well, there's always for him that works out. Keeps his options open. Uh, turns out that this is really good for Whirlwind. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I don't see how it's going to get any better. Um, I wonder if what... better might have been to do Acolyte of... No, because he was thinking of Slam Whirlwind also. Mm hmm In case things went really wrong. So, you can play three mechs here if you want to. That's good. That one's really low. You just gotta hit with one of the uh, Zappomatics and you win. Almost. Yeah, because Crackle always hits for six. And then seven, Custodum. So, so double slam could handle it, right? Yeah, and the cruel task to kill yeah. the mech warper. Okay, this is not this is not nearly over. For totally Hyde. not. It's absolutely you can, not. You can start off with the cruel task master to get two draws from the acolyte. Yeah, it's arguable that this is actually in the patron warrior's favor. Yeah, and uh, you know what? I, I wonder. There was a time where you know in, in the Undertaker meta you could play cleave and warrior just because. I wonder how often Cleave is going to come back in the metagame. Because like, the metagame will change eventually. To where maybe Patron isn't the, uh, the only thing you really want to play. Cleave would be amazing here. Yeah, it is really cool to see how old cards can come back into the metagame when it shifts. Especially with a new expansion. My Patron Warrior brought so many old cards back. I was so surprised to see No Wish Inventor as an actual good card. Like, I kept trying to find a better card for that in Patron Warrior. I was like, what, 4 mana 2 4? Surely yeah. we can find a better card than that. Nope, you can't. That's the fun part. Like, so many people argue day in, day out about how to structure the Patron Warrior best. Um, and it seems like, at this point, it seems stable. But there's still some slots that people so like to choices. pick over others. It's like, it's down to each player's you know, personal play style. To make that deck work. So, you're a bit scared of taking any more damage now, maybe. There's the armor smith. So many choices. Right, I guess the most anti damage to yourself would be frothing and armor smith and uh, inner rage, but you do need to get rid of the minions also. Um, so, he's possibly. Yeah, he's probably going to despite and then hope to... Yeah, there we go. You can do the Enraid first, because you can always kill the next minion that comes out. Not always. Oh, oh wow. Well. This would be good next expansion. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't think Silent Storm was really happy with seeing it already now. Uh, well, I mean, he's got the spell damage, he's got the crackle, he really was looking for a lava burst or something along those lines. Couldn't pick it up, unfortunately. This is where you decide your bravado. This is the best case that you're going to ever have for crackling the opponent's face. They're low, and you have a spell damage on them out. But you're up against a frothing berserker. So the question is, do you do the crackle to the face, and do you totem, and then you hope to top deck a win? Or do you think your chances are actually better by crackling the berserker? And I think your chances are better if you crackle the face here. Yeah, I would tend to agree with you here. I mean, if he's got the extra armor from you know, an armor smith play and whatnot, then maybe... Uh, it feels a little weird, but at the same time, you can't really play around it. Since you have to go all in. But he's gonna opt for the mechanical Yeti and still try to maybe contest this board. There's a chance the Yeti gets attacked into, and as a result of that, the opponent takes 4 damage to the face, in which case the top deck Lava Burst or Crackle number 2 would also work. Right, this is the slower version of the aggressive play. Uh, you keep your options open, you probably still Crackle the face. Okay. All Pretty roads nice lead to Rome. Up. So you can either go with the armor smith, the Nomi Fenter, and battle rates or armor up, depending how scared you are. But I really think there will be an attack with the Despite here, and at least the armor smith coming out to either draw three cards or play a lot of armor. Hmm. Well, with the veterans, you can stack a lot of armor too now. I wonder if hyped is um, scared enough to consider not attacking the Yeti with his weapon. Um, Oh, and looks okay. like you're right. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you have to figure that the shaman's remaining cards are usually burned. And that's a really patient play to just sacrifice the 12 damage frothing in order to avoid only 4 damage to yourself. Lots up. Well, so, I mean, the, the armor smith is really a big problem for Sandstorm. Yeah, but he can't really get rid of it then. Yeah, there's really no way for him to do so. So he's, he's forced in a position where he has to play it very slowly. You know, I really like this play here. <laughs> it's time we want flame to you, you give away that you have a flame totem, but it's, it's a pretty good turn. Yeah, at least he doesn't die, right? Wow, that low fab can actually hit in for seven. Well, or we do the six mana freeze. Uh, you could freeze and just play the Warsong Commander. I mean, it's not like there's a lightning storm lurking. And then you might start threatening. Um, well, you could also armor up on the back of it. I just feel like you can play it now and there's very unlikely going to be a, a drawback to it. Yeah, it looks so like you the can choice threaten between... Commander Gnomish, and then sending the 2-4 and the 3-3 three, three in. Or uh, Commander Freezing. Yeah. Or even uh, Armor Up Freezing. That would be reasonable also. I gotta move. He's gonna go for the Emergency Coolant for 6 mana. You would think that wouldn't see play, but... A <laughs> bargain. Oh, wow. The Lava Burst would have been so nice. But if the Spell Damage Totem comes out... Oh my oh, goodness! That's, wow! That's How much is this? No, it's not. No, no, uh, it's not threatening. But the low thub would have actually allowed him to get it with a high roll. Mm. So that emergency coolant was actually pretty clutch. Although I guess uh, like the, the the turn from hype would have looked very different. What would the sacrifice of the gnomish or buff of the whirling blades? It's pretty funny that the game is still so like the game Whoa. was actually really close. Whoa! That was. Such an insane crackle. I think he's really hoping that the warrior has no nothing left in the hand here. Well it's not lively, but hoping for it. Yeah. But there is a lot of quadro left in the hand of uh, hyped. Well I mean that's a really really thin hope from Sandstorm. I thought he was waiting for another crackle. Or something along those lines to just get a double burst to face and maybe get something done. But he was probably more afraid of a whirlwind and the patrons just replicating and then giving even more armor to Hyped. 
Kind of yeah, odd. Right. When you look at it, um, as some work aside, the problem with leaving that patron up isn't for the fact that like it'll do a lot of damage to you. It's because it'll gain more armor than you'll actually be able to crackle to the face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably the reason why he made the play. Well, the hype is now sitting that. comfortably on 19 health. Fell Reaver could work. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I was gonna say Fell Reaver would be a pretty okay card here, wouldn't it? And then there you go. Another spell damage totem. Is he, he's rolling a lot of spell damage totems. Still yeah. the charge. So. Doesn't have an answer yet. Just Sorry. you watch that execute off the top. Just you watch. I've just been through a lot of the card draw. Double, uh, double battle rage used last turn. That one's pretty nice too with the compared from still in the hands. And the armor gain that goes with it. The lava burst gets milled. Rock fighter gets milled. Although very often Ragnaros gets milled. And Boom! Moon. Fire elemental. So all the big cards that Silent Storm was maybe looking for to still hope to win the game. Yeah. I mean the ex the amount of armor that. Hyped is gaining at the moment. Must feel like a mountain. The sandstorm. So much armor. Can we still believe that the, that there was a moment in the game that Silent Storm was like two, three damage? Maybe off if that minion won't be, will not be killed. Like if there was set one Sepo medic alive, he would have won, right? Yeah. Was... That is the strength of the armor smith, though. And. In patron warriors, that they have even more enablers for it than uh, control warrior. You know, sometimes it's good in control warrior, but I think the armor gain effect is actually even more relevant when it comes to playing patron. Oh, we're going for the uh, last ditch effort to play control <laughs> shaman now. <laughs> oh, that's true. He's still, uh, he's trying. Maybe Not he's trying to get information. Yet. Not the best value from the Emperor, but it's still a 5-5 on the board. Pretty powerful. Oh. Uh, it's annoying. <laughs> it's basically extending the duration <laughs> of the game. Nothing more. And another spell damage totem. You know, this should have been... This could have been a <laughs> lot better a lot earlier. Oh, you can't even deal with it that well. The Emperor's gonna die. Right? Yeah, it's gonna trade... Oh. Wow, <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> Living up like to his name. Like how many cards does Hype have left? There are already two patrons being played, one frothing, two the second warsing, and then there are only three cards Whoa, left. Like wow, one, like there is one. Storm have left? Four. Four okay. But yeah, then it's then it's probably not gonna be enough. But. The bad news is we saw a lot of the big cards milled: Doctor Boom, Fire Elemental. Uh, yeah. Like. But what, like Hype, there's one frothing left, I think. Did we saw already two froddings? No, there's one more, I believe. You're right. So maybe there's a Fell Reaver top deck on Soundstorm's side and he's able to, you know, pick it up. Although then Fire War Axe Execute handles it quite nicely. And it's then the, the Shaman has uh, zero cards. Fire Elemental, did we see two of them milled? There's one milled, and actually the second Fell Reaver was milled, so there's no chance of that. And Boom and Wreck were gone too. Lotub is also already being played. Maybe there are still some low mech drops. This is pretty amusing. Wow. The Fire Elemental uh, has yeah, to be there's it. some low mech. Well, it's still pretty okay on the board here. I mean, if... Does that change anything? Not quite. No, but if there is not a minion being drawn here, it's... He can't even kill off the flame totem. Oh, there is the minion. And it is the frothing. And Silent Storm is handed, like, just sticking in there. Doing his best, but I think he knows how desperate this might have been from a long time ago. Yeah, he was playing out with a small glimmer of hope, and that looked like it might have worked for a tiny bit. Like when you get into the late game, you usually have something like a very, very small percentage of chance to win, but it's worth pursuing. Yeah, but playing a value game as a mech sh shaman against a veteran play is not something you really do a lot of times. It's fun to see. 
You can see Hyped is really thinking this through. There's sweat on his face. Mm -hmm. Very difficult decision. Is he thinking? Maybe he's thinking already to attack face with the fronting here. What could go wrong? The blue guild warrior. Yeah, maybe hype also exactly knows what is left in the deck here. Oh, yeah, we see he, Silent Storm really really had to mill cards like the Cogmaster and the, the Mech Warpers and still having some Ragnaros or Doctor Boom left. Yeah. I think the players are just playing to get information about each other's deck at this point, just to get the entire list out of the way. I don't think so. I think Hyped is really struggling to win. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 every hard. single turn is just a tiny bit too too far away, but he finally gets it. And uh, Temple Storm is equalizing with Team Celestial, so we're going to be going into the last two points for either team. Wow, that's a that's an unexpected mm -hmm. climb. So four four, and uh, yeah, they are still left with the. I don't think no, he's not benched because uh, Frozen Ice played before here. So right. still, they still have the option to either go with their uh, Demon Zoo deck or going with the Max Shaman. Yeah, and there's the Paladin all still open on Temple Storm side. Yeah, what oh, the? Hmm. The Rogue, it can't really get a bad matchup. There are two okay matchups. Sue is probably a nice matchup, and the Mech Shaman is okay. So do you want to go for just hope that you get the, the good matchup into the Zoo, or do you think, nah, maybe I can get the Paladin here now? I think Paladin's okay, because ultimately you'll still be facing off against the Shaman. I think maybe queuing up Rogue first to try to get down to the la to the Shaman from Silent Storm because if mid range if Agro Pally is your last deck, and you know you've got a decent matchup against Mech Shaman, maybe it's better to keep it for last and try to get a win with the Rogue on either of those first. But then it's really tricky if Silent Storm wins with the Shaman against the Rogue, and then the mid range pal the Agro Pally is stuck against uh, Warlock. That's tricky. It's really hard to you don't you can't really get into the like really bad matchups or not really good matchups. I, I think from the perspective of Team Temple Storm, you, you probably want Rogue into, into the zoo. But do you want that already? And it's not even that good of a matchup. It's slightly favored, but without the coin, it can get pretty hard. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's really a perspective of how you're thinking about the game, because you can either think of it as an optimist and be like, okay, I'm gonna go Paladin. I'm going to not get the zoo matchup. And then I'll get the shaman, and that's like my best chance. Or you can be the pessimist of I'm going pal. I'm uh, if I go paladin, I could go into zoo, so I have to play a rogue. Uh, ends well, up you know tempo storm gets the bad side of it. Zoo versus face paladin, uh, pretty bad matchup for the face paladin. Yeah, do you have much experience with it? Because I'm not really familiar how good Zoo is against this uh, It's aggro. very good. Uh, I found it to be very good. Unless the Paladin gets like a perfect Divine Shield start. That's what I've noticed so far. Yeah, um, from my experience, the Zoo Lock is really favored. Um, the more early game you have, the more favored you are. We know from Frozen Eyes that he does have some late game cards like Melganis and... Uh, so that's a little bit in Gara's favor. But Gara's still also got a fan of Argus, right? So maybe that'll equalize the opponent's defenders. There's a chance. That's true, too. Um, Gara has weakened his aggression a bit by adding in bigger cards like Defender of Argus. Uh, that's going to make it more in the Zoo's favor. Yeah. Because if you try to play a board control game against Zoo, you're going to lose. Most of the time. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that Gar really made his Paladin more of a Zoo Paladin. Like, in some ways, than a pure aggro one. Oh, wow, wait. Is this from the... Okay, this has to be from the Paladin perspective. There's no way this is from the Zoo perspective. I mean, okay, there's some no. worlds where this could be a Zoo hand, but that would be pretty <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I'm thinking about this, and I just can't see it happen. Because we saw Frozen Ice's curve earlier, and it just wasn't very good. But Gaara's ha Gaara really has a good hand. Yeah. Like, this is... And Frozen Ice doesn't. Perfect. Has a good turn one, but like no follow up. So it really I has to hope say that this he's... is a good turn one. When when you're a zoo and you're gonna play flame imp on turn one, you can see like Frozen Ice's expression. Oh, I'm just gonna take three damage, and then the opponent's gonna play Leopard. Now I'm gonna take two more damage, and it's like basically it's a trade, and I lose five health. 
Yeah, I've Gar sucked. is in an amazing position here with the not only the the almost phase hunters early game like this is perfect, and he's got the Anoyotron to you know save himself from any type of funky removal plays that Frozen Ice might be attempting, and he's got the Shield Mini Bot and the Knife Juggler. That doesn't even account for any top decks that he gets from now on. So that's just this insane. might be one of Gara's toughest turns because he has like seven possible plays. I I just count them all up. Like I think yeah. there's seven. Um, but the ones that are most in contention would be Coin Shield and Mini Bot and mm. Infiltrator Coin Lepernum. But think about the. I think he's think, considering Void Walker being an issue. Like if you play Lepernum and Worgen Infiltrator, then Void Walker is a problem. So you're forced to play Anoyotron to stall a bit. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, the thing is, Shield the Minibot is also not so good about Voidwalker here, too. So, bad news is Frozen Ice continues the whiff. Oof. Oh, ah, so many this expensive. Getting, um, it could come down to a Bane of Doom. Like, this game might actually rely on a Bane of Doom to do something amazing for Frozen Ice. Like, a Felguard would be good. Um... Malganus, obviously. Jaraxxus is pretty sweet. Wow. Yeah. And the thing is, even if it does happen, that Bane of Doom comes up with something ridiculous. Uh, it turns out that Frozen Ice is still unlucky because what he really needed was this early game control. Like all the Creeper last turn. Yeah, last turn would have been amazing for the Creeper, but... Uh, and nice Gara, Gara has so many options. Gara has the options to either go Knife to go and then Worgen or Lepernome. Has to turn 4 through Silver, but is never bad. Wow, Frozen Ice of Zootraw is in the past. The, the two games we've seen him play it haven't exactly been on point. It's been just a disaster every time. And now the Blessing of Kings to rub salt in the wound. If things happen to survive, which they should. So... I guess Gara will go for the knife here. I don't see any reason to I'll not go for it. So you well, kill the 2 1 with the Anoyotron and then you pop the spider and juggler one drop. Right. Yeah, or um, just ignore the spider. Those are the two main plays. If you were to try to go for the juggle, you would do the Anoyotron last. Alright, so he can't possibly pop the spider after this. There's no way. Well, it's not a bad card, and now Bane of Doom's turn is coming up, so there might be a big swing for like one turn. He really needs that big swing. There needs to be something that is really big out of the Bane of Doom here. Yeah, there's also a decision to be made on whether or not you break this so you add more power to your board. And you do one damage to a Neutron. Yeah. By staying like this though, you're less vulnerable to the juggler and you're almost guaranteed to get like if there's no choice over champion, you're almost guaranteed to get the uh, the knife not to be that bad of a deal. If a minion gets played, muster. It's not even really good on this board, I guess, with with the uh, in-game boss and the haunted creeper. Yeah. You can either go with it. Uh, the true silver is pretty decent here, but the blessing of kings also puts puts a lot of pressure out. Yeah, Iron Cal would make sure you negate that though. So I think ultimately. Well, if there was an owl, you would have probably seen it already, considering his turn two was so awful. It would have sound stopped the shield of minibar. Alright, put your hands together if you're frozen ice. Yeah, it's this is it. Iron Jesus, lend me your strength. What does he really want? Jaraxxus, maybe? Is Dr right. Jaraxxus is better than Malganus, right? Yeah. So I guess ultimately he's looking for Draxus. It'll trade into anything about for, no, for about Doomguard. seven turns. Yeah, Doomguard Doomguard's not even bad. Uh, or Draxus right. into an August is really good. But he needs something big, that's for sure. It's yeah, it's gonna be a flame imp, just you watch or blood imp. Just you watch. <laughs> Aww. That will be so sad already with such a slow hand. He's thinking of doing it into the Noratron to get bad better trades with the creeper. I can see that, but if it doesn't work, then the knives are going to be a big pro. Oh, oh wow. That's a good one as well. Yeah. It's not big, but it could become big. I mean, by proxy, I guess it's a big demon. Hmm. Alright. not attacking. 
do you have to be very aggressive here if you're Garo, or do you can you afford to play it somewhat slow? Because I mean, trading oh. is going to possibly like backfire. But then defensive Argus can make really want to break the spider, just because all of his minions have one health. So having two more spiders is a big deal. Seems like he's just going aggressive here. Pure Shokadin style. No. And how does this <laughs> actually wait? How well, does they're... this annoy How does this void caller die ever? Yeah. The only way for it to die is for him to top like defend of Argus and then go through something. If he had, if he attacked last turn into the Neutron, he called suicide in the Wargun, but then he still called and killed the Wargun at all. Yeah. So Doom Guard discard the Egg and Doctor Boom. Mm. Oh man. Well, he could get back in the game if he talks to play Argus. Guard, yeah. yeah, and hope. Uh, I mean, I guess you still want to keep Dr. Boom, but you really start needing to play Defend of Argus if you top deck it. So. Whoa. Nice job. Nicely done, but so. many top decks are in Gara's deck. Yeah. And all. Are you scared already that there is maybe that Malganis in the deck that comes out maybe next turn? Uh, well, there is nothing still to put the Void Walker into. Yeah. So, I think the idea here is to let Lepronome win the game for you. Yeah, the Owl should be kept for insurance against Defender of Argus. Oh, oh there it is. Wow. You can see Frozen Eyes smiling up. <laughs> He's like, the only card I could have gotten that would have saved me, but then Consecration is a problem. Hammer of Wrath's a Consecration. Uh, there are a too problem many well. cards that are a problem. My yeah. shield Including Lepronome number two. <laughs> That's pretty amusing. Because board power is 8, 10, 14, 16. You can do 6 right now to put him at 16. Um... Four, five, six, seven, eight power on board. Uh, it will be lethal, anyways. I think there, you silence the Imkang boss here. There is some 4 HP left. It depends and, uh, what he's gonna do with this attack here, right? Yeah, if he goes face, I think he yeah. loses. Then and he if loses. he trades, yeah, he's dead. Uh, okay. Well, that was a pretty close thing, and he did pick up the second Lepronome, so he might have been able to to win it either way. Yeah, and there was still the weapon, so it was two damage, so it didn't really matter what he will do with that attack. But... Yeah. Wow, Tem and... Temple Storm is turning the table. I mean, I'm kind of surprised to see this, but 4-1 to 5-4 in the favor of Temple Storm. There's one deck left to go. Like, one deck. It's the rogue, right? From uh, yeah, Arts. it is. It is and against the the zoo. Against the zoo, against the shaman. I guess uh, Silent Storm will go first with the shaman to get the better matchup. Well, zoo is not a bad matchup either. I can see them also pick zoo, but I expect here to go with the Silent Storm and going with the shaman. Yeah, I'm I agree completely. Be because more. the tiebreaker points do matter. Uh, you want to have as many wins as you can, so you get the best matchup going. When it comes yeah. down to this, what's the what's the win rate of shaman against of mech shaman against or rogue? Is it somewhere like sixty five percent ish? Or I mean, they need to have the backstabs and the SIs very often, or a really sick blade flurry. One card is actually really good against rogue. Is sometimes fell reaver. If you just play it on turn five, you either have to play three cards as a rogue into it, or you, you sap it, but you know it comes back the turn afterwards, so sometimes this is a matchup where the Fell Reaver might matter. It's The, the matchup doesn't really go to fatigue. I've only played it from the Rogue perspective a lot, and when I had a Fell Reaver on the board, it sometimes was just enough for them to close the game, because I either had to sap it, it comes back, and I couldn't fatigue them. So it's hard to kill it for the Rogue. Yeah. Well, he's going to be playing the Rogue into the Shaman, so Sandstorm is going to be trying to get that win to at least uh, give a chance to his partner, maybe to seal a series with the Zoo deck. So somebody said, uh, you know, there was a bit of a stumble in the first uh, the first loss. 
with Tempo Storm, but then they really came back strong. There's a chance they're going to be able to close the series. If they do it, how many wins are they going to be up to? They're going to be up they will go two to two wins. Two wins. Yes, All so right. they will be in the middle of the standings. Yeah, only one of the teams actually gets eliminated mm -hmm. from the first stage of the event. So you really don't want to be last, basically. Yeah, this is a actually really important matchup for Celestial because it was it is their chance continues to be their chance to uh, knock another team down to like last place with them, and then climb up from there. Um, if you lose this one, not only do you like worsen your record, but you lose out on the chance to drag one team down. That's a pretty good hand from Hype side. So against the Mech Shaman, I mean, Zapomatic's not going to be an issue. Fan of Knives with a Blood Mage later could be pretty solid. So we'll have to see what Sandstorm picked up for his starting hand. Since he's first player, and he doesn't get a one drop. Yeah, so not Hyped, just a good uh, hand, but an insane hand. Oh, and Sandstorm has a really bad hand. Yeah, this is not at all what you want to be looking at. Playing turn two is Zepomatic against the Rogue. Everyone knows the feeling probably with playing 3-2 Vanillas against the Rogue when they have to coin the possibility SI7. It feels yeah. so bad. They can coin SI, they can backstab, they can coin Deadly Poison on the dagger. They've got about 17,000 plays. None of them really make you happy. So he doesn't play the 2-drop. He opts to just Totem instead. Yeah, definitely a wise choice given the experience that the opponent like could have this uh, also you to keep in mind like how many cards the rogue keep and the rogue definitely kept backstab and si7 agents so sounds like okay he has an answer i don't even have a follow -up. so he makes like the lesser of two evils this is a good play but it's going to be tough yeah, oh, he does pick up a two minion turn, but it's exactly what Soundstorm yeah. like uh, is going to be running into. Like you know, the backstab SI. It's, it's the board is so gone. The board is gone. He doesn't even use up the coin. That's the impressive part. Well, I can consider now coining out the teacher maybe with the with the backstab. Well, it's not a bad eater, but eh, both players are, both players are pretty nice here. How safe does Hyped want to play this? Probably as safe as possible in this matchup. So we're not going to have. I don't think we'll be expecting anything but backstab SI in that case. Mm -hmm. Unless Fan of Knives and trade into the 3 2 could see play, but then you're not putting anything on the board. Yeah. This, this just feels perfect. I'm not sure if you want to attack now or that you want to have a 1 1 dagger up. It's pretty likely you want to play, play teacher next turn, so it might matter to just leave the dagger up. Alright, especially with both fans too. Leaving the dagger up is also good because you can do the teacher coin mm -hmm. uh, deadly poison. It's a bit it sad didn't... maybe because you have only that one dagger but it's still really good to also get the two one ones against an aggressive deck like this uh, mech shaman right every one one you have the mech shaman can't remove it doesn't run lightning storm um, and they're just going to be on the board to pretty much guaranteed do one damage to whatever you want without taking face damage so that's a big deal Pay attention, class. reparation would be a big deal here if you're in the rogue position you can actually get a little bit more flexibility What would be a disaster? He doesn't want to attack it and get Doomsayer. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, that's what I'm thinking is what would the disaster just... Oh man. Alright. Alright. That's, that's still bearable. I get scared every time. Like, you know, people say that card is controlled RNG. But I'm telling you, man, it's not. I'm getting laughed at by all the shredders in this world. Soon you're gonna be able to get Totem Golem with it. No oh, man, that's a good crackle. So 50% chance to kill it outright, and then Earthshock the 3-1. That's potentially putting Soundstorm back in control of the game next turn if Hype doesn't pick up something for the board. And he doesn't oh. really yet. Hmm. There is a pretty nice curve now with the 
either Fel Reaver or Lotep into Dr. Boom. And I can even see here Avid playing the Lotep because there is no minion being played when you had the option. So you know the hand is full of spells. Every five, every minion while being played last turn. Yeah, this is a nice uh, rally from Sunstorm. He's going to be able to lock it up and then lock up this turn and get into Dr. Boom. That's a really good draw from Hyped. He drew a minion. Yeah, yeah, he can actually attack into low seven, and heal himself back up to 29, I guess. Just to use up maybe a bit of uh, the utility from the heal bot, unless he really wants to keep the dagger for the oil play. Yeah, unless, I like he to really wants a uh, two durability dagger here. There is Boom. Here we go. He's uh, Soundstorm is starting turn seven with the first bit of damage here, but um, the hyped's yeah, got what it takes coming. to nullify it, right? I believe hyped has what he needs, although he's like one mana off of really pulling it off. So there's a chance he just goes for tinkers. The flurry just looks really good because it clears the ball, the wall board. You're gonna take seven damage. That's the only thing if you are attacking into the doctor room. Hmm. You can also go with the Fan of Knives and just Tinker, but then you really rely on a good Tinker hit. Uh, what he might be thinking about also is just to use the Heal Bot to deal 3 damage, and then just Oil Blade Flurry deals 4 to each, 1 damage goes to the low Um That's a really weak board that he's going to be left with, but he'll take no damage. Yeah. That's, pretty, that's the safest way to really play it. Because otherwise Shaman, you're worried, is going to burst you down with Rock Biters and Lava Bursts and possibly the second Crackle they might have in their hand. That's probably the only play that really guarantees that he's going to be able to, to live more often than not. Yeah, does a good amount of damage to the opponent too. 8 damage. Does the 1-1 live? And it does! Wow, that's, that's pretty good really for good. Hyped. Double Fell Reverse again. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no more deck. You don't need a deck anyway, right? This is one of those cases where uh, if Hyped discards Silent Storm's deck, uh, Silent Storm has a good chance of discarding Hyped's face. Yeah. He needs to prep. That's so big here. He's getting another three cards out. But there is no setup, so what I said already earlier, like the Fell Reaver on the board, and you can try to mill them, but it's too early to mill, I think. Well, I mean, what do you do? Do you play a Zerg Drake and try to get a sap uh, or prep the same way that you still need it right now and Fan of Knives would give it to you? I mean, either yeah. way, Fan of Knives is good. As a Drake fan, thing, at least yeah. kills the Zeppo Medic here. Mm -hmm. Right, and it draws deeper into what will hopefully be an answer. So the Shredder, not quite the answer he's looking for, but there is a lot of counter pressure, even from Sunstorm's perspective. Can you Ooh, go that's all really in? close. Yeah, that's going. That's 15. getting really close. Oh. Or rather, he's got 18. And 18 uh, now. It's just 5 off. Checks the decks real fast. Uh, Sunstorm has 11 cards left. Against a uh, rogue deck with 9 mana, you might expect to lose the remaining part of your deck anyway. So, sure, play the Fell Reaver. Yeah, Fell Reaver, Flame Tongue, and then Rock Bite Face with everything you've got, and then Hope Lava Burst carries you. You can also Reaver, Flame Tongue, and then Normal Turn. Yeah, you can always okay. use the Rock Biter. Well, I'm not going for it. Lava oh, he's going to play the slow thing. game still. All right, so okay. he doesn't want to die to uh, Tinker's you, Oil Burst, I guess. You can Which see that sense. he's like his main, that he is really known maybe also for playing mid-range Shaman. That he, he likes yeah. to trade a lot on the board and... He's uh the reasoning behind that is he's thinking okay lava burst is going to deal five but my my uh, fell reaver has a chance of dealing eight and if that drake is out there I have a much higher chance of losing the fell reaver uh, in fact it turns out to be a really good play because eviscerate plus the one one would have dealt six damage so now are there any farseer could come down to really kind of s maybe save hype a little bit from his perspective you double eviscerate the Double of this, wow. On the 8 8. You're gonna mill most of your opponent's deck, so he has to have you know, at least uh, 7 damage from hand to kill you. Well, at least the deck is gone, I guess. It's, it's not like you have much of a choice, right? No, it's like 18 cards that uh, will be discarded, so I guess there is no deck left. 
And it's going to be it, given that we know what Silentstorm's hand is. Uh, hyped as one. If he deals with this uh, Bell Reaper at least next turn... Oh, that's right! There's still he the needs Bell to, He needs to deal with it. Like, if there comes a Sound Totem, it might be really annoying. Yeah, you need to sprint into the sap at least. Yeah. I mean, that would help you a lot. Yeah, there like, is still a sprint, and there's double sap left. Like, that's yeah. called way ahead of three. time by me. <laughs> is he gonna <laughs> trade into the Earth and Ring here? He might um, trade into the Earth and Ring. Like he needs two attacks anyways from the from the Pearl Reaver. Right. So it's all so, about uh, can you get an answer? Ooh, prep, oh. uh, prep sprints. There we go. Surely he can. Surely he can. Yeah, there okay. is. Like two steps left, right in the deck. I mean, I expect him playing with two steps at least. Oh my god! No. Oh, is it uh -oh. really not gonna be a set? Oh, oh. the sap. The <laughs> You see high reaction. Oh wow! <laughs> he was breathing a sigh of relief right there at the end. That sap. Uh, That's uh, still not over. He needs an answer next turn too. Well, he can play the shredder now and probably be set up for Lethal with Blade Three, right, or something along those lines. I'm not sure. Is he going to flurry, maybe, to yeah, he get rid could of the do it. He could do it. And then re-dagger up. But he or knows there's him. only the... Yeah, oh, wow, this game. Yeah, that 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 Fell Reaver might actually be enough to carry Soundstorm forward. Oh, yeah, there's only going to be one Shredder so, on board. And there are two minions that are useless. So he really needs to top deck a spell here. That's the... It's oh wow! Right. Oh wait, it could fatigue have been do planned. it. Oh, fatigue is gonna do it. No, he's on seven like, health right now, so he's got you know seven more fatigue. So two turns. Oh no, but there will be the attack from the shredder in the yeah, face. Yeah, he's dead. That he's is dead. dead. Yeah, wow. Fatigue is gonna deal three damage, and hyped actually taking into account the if fatigue damage. If it does damage. a down totem, uh, silent storm will have won. You're right. Twenty five percent chance to win the game. Ah, uh, what a game! So close. Wow. That was a really intense series. 4-1 for Team Celestial and then Temple Storms come comes back just like 6-4, finishing off the entire match. That was a big turnaround for Temple Storm. Yeah, and really well played after being so behind 4-1 and taking the series 6-4 is pretty impressive. Yeah, you've got to hand it to them though, like sticking to their guns, they're really playing well. I think the aggro pally from uh, from Gar, we were a little worried about um, initially, but it turned out to do fairly well. Although Frozen Ice's zoo draws were ultimately not quite good enough. So that's going to position, um, you know, Team Celestial still at the bottom of the rankings at the moment. So yeah, not quite where they wanted to be at the end of this. Yeah, they really have to take take off some wins now to go up in the standings and go away from that last place. What they probably want is just going for that sixth place. Yeah, yeah They're going well. to be really rooting for Team Liquid to lose this next matchup, <laughs> which is coming up. Yeah, we'll have Team Liquid uh, playing right up uh, against, I believe, Team Archon, if I'm not mistaken, with Fire Bats, right. LA, and x That's going mm -hmm. to be a pretty intense series against Best of Eleven, same format. Each player brings two decks with the whole bench rule that we already know about. Um, I mean, wow, Team Celestial must not be, uh, you know, too happy about this. This is really a devastating blow to them because their standings are almost unrecoverable. Almost. Uh, not quite. What they really need, well, they really need Liquid to lose here. Because otherwise, each team is going to be two wins ahead. But if Liquid loses, then there's going to be one team which uh, is in contention for last place along with them. All right, so they still have a chance of... Well, I mean, they still have a chance, obviously. It's just uh, incredibly tough for them. All right, well, that being said, guys, uh, we're done with the first series. We'll be taking a short break in between uh, the two series. Before we go, a quick shout-out to Amazon and Alpha Drafts for sponsoring the tournament. Also, I'd like to, uh, to let you know the Amazon is actually running a giveaway. If you want to check it out,